Good evening, everyone. I am your host and instructor, Lainey Shaughnessy, and welcome to Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. Spindle TV is brought to you by Digital Woodcarver, inspiring your creativity and providing you with the tools to create your own unique masterpieces. Hello everybody, hope all is going well. I didn't have a chance, I was going to um, uh, set up a dual streaming system for uh, with two computers and everything, uh, and I meant to do that uh, earlier, but I got tied up and I didn't get a chance to, to do that. So we might, you know, just like the weeks before, we might have a little bit of, uh, you know, lagging or things like that uh next week i'm hoping the situation will be much improved uh i've got a second uh, uh pc that i'm going to use for one for my uh, vetric and designing and things and the other i'm going to use for streaming because um i don't have a very good graphics card long story short and um the uh having a second pc set up uh, it'll be less on my CPU uh, if I'm streaming from one computer working on another. And then we won't have any more buffering and all that wonderful stuff. Well, I hope you had a good Easter. Uh, my name is Laney Shaughnessy. For those of you that might be new joining us tonight, um, uh, welcome. And uh, But I hope all of you had a good uh, Easter holiday and, 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 and maybe spent time with the family or just relaxed. Myself, uh, I actually got out in the wood shop and started uh, building and making some things, did some carving, and uh, I was happy about that. All right, tonight we are going to be making some gift boxes. Now these are, these are don't think of like boxes where you've got miter joints and that. No, we're going to do uh, nice little uh, gift boxes, maybe a, a nice round box with a 3D carving on the lid, uh, a nice pin box you know if you're giving away an, and maybe you're a pin turner nice little uh, pin box uh, nice little square box but all of these are going to be made by uh, you know a single board um, we're going to be carving uh, the base the bottom of the box and the lid of the box uh, out of uh, two pieces uh, or one piece of wood basically and um, uh, to be able to create these nice uh, nice boxes and everything and um, I'm going to show you a couple of different styles of uh, some that uh, that I've made, and uh, we'll um, uh, go through those those different designs together and all. But uh, it should be fun uh, because uh, you can either like for the pin boxes, I just make them out of three quarter inch material, um, whether it be maple or walnut, depending on you know what what I want the finished piece to look, the finished box to look like, and all. Uh, out of my uh, little bit bigger boxes, you'll see the rounder ones. Uh, I usually uh, go with a little bit thicker piece of wood. Um, and uh, a lot of times, if I don't have, if I don't have a uh, uh, you know a thicker piece, uh, then I might end up you know laminating two three quarter inch pieces together to give me an inch and a half. And it all really depends on how deep you want the bowl uh, or the box or, or you know uh, the cavity, whatever you want to call it. And uh, but. You know, these, uh, it's a nice little um, uh, techniques that we work with when making the boxes that we, we're going to be talking about offsets and offset allowances and things like that when we're creating our pocket cuts and our profile cuts and stuff. So, um, uh, and we're going to be working with offsets, uh, you know, uh, as far as the vectors that we're going to be drawing and stuff. And so hopefully you'll get, uh, you'll be able to take something away from this uh, that'll be useful to you, right? Yeah, that's all. So that's what's all about learning and stuff and all. And at the same time, be able to make some very cool things. Um, the uh, uh, pin boxes. I wish I had a pin box here to show you, um, but uh, uh, I, I make them to give you know to give to people and stuff. So I don't have one to physically show you. But they're they're nice. They're 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 simple uh, and elegant. You can customize them and carve them however you want. So really cool stuff. And then of course we'll make some. 
uh, different uh, different designs as well, different shapes and things that maybe m might be for candy or jewelry or whatever, a ring box, whatever you want to, you know, whatever you want to box up. So we'll go from there. All right, Dr. Pepper, cheers, everyone. Let's get on over to, uh, uh, and, and welcome everybody. Uh, so many names, so many names, uh, but welcome everybody. Uh, I appreciate you joining me tonight. All right, with that being said, let's jump on over uh, to our VCAR Pro screen here. And before I get uh, into it all and everything, let's uh, let's do an audio check. Check one, two. Check one, two. Make sure you can hear me. Uh, make sure everybody can hear me. Make sure everybody can see my big old black mouse that I've been that I switched to uh, last week or what have you. And um, then we'll uh, we'll move on. So just give me a. Uh, good here, yes, thumbs up, whatever you want to do to let me know. And while you do that, I'm going to take another sip of my Dr. Pepper. All right. Okay. So for today's setup, uh, these boxes are going to be, uh, I am going to be setting this up as a two-sided job. Now, one of the boxes, the pin box, doesn't require uh, it to be two sides um, unless you want to do like a custom engraving on the top and I do I want to I want to uh, do a custom engraving on all the boxes I want to do a nice 3d model on our round box uh, nice engraving on our heart box and stuff so uh, we're gonna set this up as a two-sided job and if you haven't done a two-sided job yet you should really try one to, and this would be a great project for you to try on um, we're going to talk about, you know, uh, setting up our alignment pins and, uh, you know, flipping. This would require a waste board because we are going to use alignment pins to um, uh, align our material when we flip it over. So we're going to be uh, milling uh, holes for those alignment pins in our waste board. So you would use a waste board with this project. And plus we're cutting the project out. So uh, you, you'd want to do that. For the first one. Um, we're gonna we're, we'll start off uh, uh, simply with our, our pin box and then we'll move up from there uh, it's gonna be for our job setup it's gonna be a double-sided job and the um, size of the material really depends on I mean it doesn't have to be a whole lot of material it could be a really small board I'm gonna use a 14 inch uh, board uh, that is five and a half inches wide and in width uh, and it's three quarters of an inch thick uh, that's what I'm going to be using uh, for uh, that. Yeah, right. And uh, for this, uh, now myself, me personally, uh, with my waste board set up and everything, as it being my cam clamp jig as well, uh, I work off the machine bed uh, for my uh, Z0 position. But you can work off your material. You can work off the material side uh, for side one. And then when you flip it over, side one would then be the waste board side so that, you know, that would be, uh, you know, you can alternate um, however you want to do. And uh, if to alternate, you know, you would you would uh, check off the box that says zero off the same side. But for me, I'm using the machine bed, but you can set yours up any way you'd like. Uh, the XY datum position uh, for me, uh, my setup is the bottom left corner. Uh, due to my jig and again you can work from the center or any of the four corners of the board uh, but I'm gonna work off the bottom left center bottom left center bottom left corner all right now uh, with me I always flip my boards along my y-axis uh, the length of my table is uh, the x-axis the width of the table is the y y positive y minus and everything uh, and I always flip my board along the y-axis I very rarely flip along the x I always flip along the y so uh, we're going to choose uh, this icon here for flipping along the y-axis. And uh, because I am going to be working with models and stuff, I'm going to have my modeling resolution set to very high. Uh, for those of you that do not know, the modeling resolution does affect the quality of the cut. Uh, it, you know, if you're using a standard or a high uh, setting, you may have some pixelation uh, in your 3D view and your model and stuff. And that pixelation will translate into the cut quality and stuff on your CNC. So we want to choose the highest 
uh, possible. Now, I'm not creating or building a model. You know, I'm not in my Aspire software. I'm in vCard Pro today because everything I want to do here today can be done in Pro, Desktop, or Aspire. Um, but we want to at least use the very high uh, resolution for our model resolution. All right, we're going to go ahead and click OK for the job setup, and we're off and running. Now, let me break out my trusty tape measure here. All right, the pin that uh, I'm going to be making uh, my box for is, uh, you know, it's a uh, crossed pin, um, and it is just about five and five eighths in length, the actual pin itself. So I want to make sure that uh, the box that I make that is going to comfortably fit that pin. Now, uh, if any of you are familiar with uh, uh, woodworking and stuff, um, you may have made jewelry boxes in the in the past and stuff, and you might uh, in your jewelry boxes uh, in the in the drawers, you may have done uh, some felt or might have gotten fancy and actually done some flocking, uh, you know, uh, felt flocking, uh, you know, in there and stuff. And, and that really would finish off the inside of this box really nicely, a nice little flocking kit and all. And you can get those from Rockler and things like that and stuff. But, um, uh, uh, or just the adhesive felt from like a Hobby Lobby, you know, uh, and everything. Um, I usually try to do something. Uh, I have different uh, uh, bits of foam, um, that is kind of almost like a charcoal gray and everything and i will i will cut out uh, some foam pieces and I'll, I'll cut out where the pin would sit in and stuff and everything just to give it it's all you know it's a gift box so it's all presentation but you don't have to do that if they're not worth it <laughs> all right so now out of this 14 inch board i'm actually going to be able to get quite a few uh, uh boxes out of it I'm, i'll probably get um uh, two, yeah, I'll get two sets, uh, two bottom, two lids. I'll probably get two out of this one, maybe three. We'll see how it fits in there and everything. But we're going to start off uh, with uh, our rectangle tool. We're going to draw a rectangle. Now, um, on the rectangle, whether you want uh, radius corners or square corners and everything, right now we're making, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we're going to be changing those corner types and stuff for uh, the different offsets and everything. But uh, if you want the outside of your box to have a square body, uh, then you're going to have square corners. If you want to have some nice radiuses so it's a, a little bit uh, softer to the touch and stuff, use radius corners and all. Uh, I'm going to start off with square corners and then uh, we'll kind of go from there. Now, uh, since my uh, box is, uh, or since not my box, since my pin is about five and five eighths, uh, I want to give myself a little bit, uh, you know, I want to I give myself plenty of room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to start with that cavity. Uh, so if I'm at five and five eighths, I'm going to draw a six inch box. Uh, this is going to be the inside cavity that I'm going to start with. I kind of work from in out based on my pin and everything. So I'm going to go six. Now a pin's not very wide at all, uh, you know, and everything, but I do like to have a little bit of room, uh, and everything. And, uh, I usually, uh, my, my pin boxes maybe about two, two and a quarter inches, uh, wide. Uh, and, uh, I think that I, I, unless I'm doing a pen and pencil set type of thing, I usually don't go any wider than that. So, um, on the width of this pocket and everything, it's not going to be, uh, very, very wide. So, uh, at six inches, the height, the width of this pocket that the pen's going to fit in, because to be honest with you guys, the pen literally is only, uh, three eighths of an inch fat, you know, and if you have a big cigar pen that you might have turned on the lathe or something like that, that requires a little bit more room then kind of, you know, go from there. Uh, but this pocket, I'm going to go with a, um, uh, three quarters, one inch. I think I'm going to go three quarters. So 0.75. <clears throat> Okay, now this is going to be my cavity. Let's move it over here, and we'll, we'll get everything positioned once we get everything drawn. Now, 
on the um, on the outside or not outside, but uh, on the uh, pen itself. Now we have to have a, a lip around this uh, inner part that is going to basically that the the, the uh, lid's going to slide over and everything. And on my lip, I um, let me go ahead and use the offset tool. On my lip, I usually uh, like I like a, a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, at least at a minimum of a quarter, but a little bit, a little bit more than that. So I'm going to go um, 0.3, three inches outward. We're going to offset this. And I don't want sharp corners. And as a matter of fact, I will be changing the corner type on this to radius here in just a second. Uh, matter of fact, let me do that before I do the offset. Let's go back into our rectangle tool with our rectangle selected and let's change this radius type. Now I'm gonna be using a quarter inch end mill to, to carve this. So I just want my radius to be just the radius of that end mill. So I'm just gonna use an eighth inch radius uh, for, for those rounded edges and everything there, just a you know, subtle round edge. All right, now I would, let's go ahead and offset. Uh, and again, I'm gonna offset outward. I'm gonna go 0 0.3 around, there we go. Now let's look at my overall uh, height here. So I'm at, I'm at an inch and three quarters. Like I said, we're going to probably be around. Um, we're probably going to be around uh, two inches and in all when everything is done. Not one and three quarters. One point three seven five. So one and three eighths. All right. So I've got my uh, lip here, and now the outside of my box. And this is where uh, we're going to decide. Um, I don't, I don't really want those radiuses being that big. I'm looking at this going, I don't know. Let me see here uh, if I change this to an eighth of an inch as well. And all I did was open up the rectangle tool with that outer offset selected. And let's change that. Yeah. I I personally like that better, and as a matter of fact, I like that better, and I might be able to get away with 0.3. No, that's actually, that's pretty good. We'll go 0.3. I, I like a little bit of meat here, because this is really going to, you're going to be popping it on and off and on. This is, this is important, so 0.3. A uh, quarter of an inch at minimum, and I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, uh, talking things out, out loud to you. Okay, now, on my box, on the actual outside of the box, I could offset this even further, blah, 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 but um, I, I want to make sure on this one, I'm either going to do square corners if I want my box to have a square corner, and I might soften up those edges with sandpaper when it's all carved, or I might want to do a small radius. It really kind of all depends on what you want the final aesthetics to look like. And when that lid is on the box, which you'll see here how things kind of come together in a moment, but when that lid is on the box, um, I really want uh, uh, those overall corners. I'd like them to be not, not sharp, just a little bit broken, so we might use a smaller offset or a smaller uh, radius than an eighth of an inch, but an eighth of an inch isn't bad either. And so let's go ahead, let's use the offset tool one more time. And this time on my lip, uh, I want three sixteenths of an inch all the way around. Uh, and uh, that's gonna be uh, my outer lip here, my outer perimeter of the base. This is the bottom of this box here. So I wanna offset out uh, 0.1875. 0.875, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on offset, and then I want to go back into the rectangle tool, and uh, my radius, this is where I'm talking about, do I want a fat radius, to, you know, what do I want this box to look like, because um, it, it's going to be uh, important to me, uh, kind of in the overall scheme of things, and you know how a drawer, you know how a, a ring box 
you know, the little square ring boxes. Because this, everything that I'm doing here, this is just for a pin, but you square it up, then you got yourself a ring box. So all the steps still apply uh, in things. But, uh, you know, in a ring box, you know, usually they're uh, velvet or something when you buy those cheap ring boxes. But, uh, you know, a lot of times they have, their they're, they're four corners are got a good little radius on them and stuff. So 0.3125, uh, let's see here, 5 sixteenths. That's not a bad radius. Um, let me see what it looks like as a uh, quarter inch radius, 0.25. And that changes it quite a bit, gives it a little bit more square. I'm going to stick with the 0.25 uh, radius on that. Okay, so now we've got the base of the box. And so let's, let's create the tool pass on this just so you can start getting a visual of, um, of how this is going to look. Okay, and so we're going to jump over to the tool path. And then once I get this laid out and everything, I'm gonna move everything over and I'll fit as many of the tops and bottoms that I can on this board to cut as many as I can out uh, of it. But uh, for right now, I'm just gonna leave it in the position that it's at. And so on here, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna be pocketing between these two lines here on the outside to create uh, a little lip and everything. And then we're gonna be pocketing on the inside. Done and done, very simple. Uh, generally, the pocket on the outside is going to be shallower than the pocket on the inside. The pocket on the inside is going to be as deep as you need it for your pen or whatever the object is that's going to be in there. Uh, I use a little bit of foam, a small sheet of foam and things. Uh, and also, um, uh, you know, I usually on my three quarter inch board, uh, my pocket is pretty much about maybe a half inch deep on that inner pocket and everything and then I've got foam and then the pen and, and all that stuff or you could go 3 8 you don't have to go you know a pull a full half inch or something and all uh, up to you all right so let's go ahead and um, and the box is is gonna be a little bland unless we do an inscription or something on the bottom side but the lid is what we're gonna kind of decorate the lid that we haven't made yet we're gonna decorate and stuff but uh, you may want to put your name or inscription, you know, love Jonathan, whatever, you know, uh, on the bottom. Who knows what it is. Uh, and if it's love Jonathan and you're giving somebody a pen because you love them, you're not going to be in that relationship for very long. Okay. All right. So let's see here. Uh, let's start with our uh, outside pocket. And that's going to be a pocket tool path. And uh, for this, now on the... Um, uh, outside rim, I do go probably maybe uh, three eighths, like halfway down or a quarter inch deep. It really depends on uh, uh, the lip and everything. And I'm going to go with a quarter uh, now. I'm going to go with a quarter. Uh, so we're going to go um, 0.25. Too many decimal points. Let me get rid of one of those. And I'm going to be using my quarter inch end mill. Uh, and uh, one of the things that uh, if I do this now, if I if I carve this and everything and and cut this, when I do my profile cut uh, to cut out this bottom, I may end up with little hairs or little fuzzes around the end. And so what I might want to do is let my router bit go beyond that outside line just a little bit. And... Uh, I, I could do a, a pocket allowance, but if I do that, then it's going to do a, an allowance over both lines. And I'm, if I, if I want to go outward, I'm going to go outward only towards the outer part of the box. So I won't use the allowance on this. Rather so, I'm going to jump back over to my offset tool and this line here, uh, this outer perimeter, I'm going to offset it outward a small amount, um, maybe a... Uh, sixteenth of an inch and I don't need sharp corners on this and that's gonna be that's gonna be the line that I use with uh, this inner line here that's gonna be my pocket that way I get nice clean edges when I do the profile cut on the profile uh, this this inner one right here is gonna be my profile cut so let's go ahead and create our pocket 
All right, gonna go a quarter of an inch deep. I'm using my quarter inch end mill. Uh, I'm doing this in two passes. My end mill takes an eighth of an inch per pass, and that's fine because I'm gonna be carving this out of my maple or walnut or something and everything. Uh, so I am gonna do an offset. It's gonna be a much more optimized tool path uh, for me. And um, I could, uh, if I wanted to uh, make sure that I don't get any tool marks, especially on this inner wall or anything like here, I could do uh, some ramping. Uh, and I could do a ramp where I'm leading in and leading out. Um, and I may do that. Uh, uh, no, I don't have a lead in, lead out option here in the pocket. So all I have is a plunge. I'm going to add a ramp and I'm just going to add a, uh, I'm using a quarter inch bit. I'm going to have a uh, three quarter inch ramp. And we're going to go ahead and calculate this tool path. All right, so let's take a look at what we've done so far. Now, of course, I haven't got the final position yet because we did, this is gonna be a two-sided project. I gotta create my alignment holes and all that. I just wanna create these tool paths to show, so you can kind of start getting a visual of what things are looking like. So let's preview this uh, tool path here. Okay. And, um, now we're going to create the pocket on uh, this vector here. Uh, this pocket toolpath is going to be the one that's uh, going to be however deep you need it for to fit whatever you're fitting. Uh, and for me, I'm, I'm either going to go uh, uh, 3 8 or half inch. That's kind of my two depths that I work between and stuff. And so I'm going to go with a cut depth of a half inch here, 0.5. Now keep this in mind, uh, if I go a half inch, that's only gonna give me a quarter of an inch of meat on that bottom side. And if I was doing a V-carve type inscription or something, I need to be mindful of how deep my cut's gonna be on that bottom side because I'm only gonna have a quarter of an inch of material left. Uh, you know, So I wanna make sure that I don't exceed that, uh, that, that depth if I'm gonna do any type of V-carving on the bottom side of this base, okay? Uh, I'm still going to be using my quarter inch end mill. Uh, I'm going to, I'll go ahead and I'll stay with my ramp here and let's calculate uh, that tool path. And let's, uh, I'm going to call this my pin box base intercut and 0.25 EM. That's going to be the name I'll give this. I got to go back and name the other one. I want you to get in the habit of start doing that. Naming your your um, uh, tool pass and everything. So you, when you get this list, you don't have a bunch of VCARB 1, VCARB 2, VCARB 3, VCARB 4, you know, all the default names and stuff. So you, you know what they are and everything. You kind of keep track. It'll help you a little bit better when we're organizing. And also, after I calculate this, we're going to take a pause for a moment. And we're going to come over here and we're going to save our file. Notice how it says new up here in the top left corner. I haven't saved anything, my design, and we've only drawn one little thing here. We haven't gone, but save early and save often throughout the course of the project. So let's go ahead and let's do that real quick. Let's go save as, and I'm going to uh, go into my uh, desktop here, and I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call this... Uh, uh, Boxes class and I'm going to call this a box variety because I'm going to do a couple of different boxes in this project. So we'll save that. So now that I, my work is being saved, uh, you'll see that new up there in the top left corner change. And now I'm able to save often as I'm going through. But save early, save often. That's the tip of the day. Okay, let's go ahead and let's preview this uh, pocket cut. Now notice, uh, you know, what the ramp does um, and everything is, and, and let's, let's, 
reset this. I want you guys and girls, uh, ramping helps, uh, you know, your end mills and stuff. It kind of helps extend the life of the end mills and all. And um, let me, let's reset this back to a blank board for a moment. And let's look at that pin cut. I want you to watch. If we, if we turn on the tool path here uh, and we tilt to the side here, that end mill is going to come in and it's going to ramp uh, a distance of three quarters and then back. Uh, you know, and then it's going to do its carving. And then it's going to ramp on the second cut, do its carving, and ramp on its third cut, and do its carving. And what this does is rather than that bit plunging down, straight down, uh, that's when you have a lot of wear and tear on that bit, when it's plunging straight down. And in a, a pocket cut, you know, it's going to go down if there's multiple passes. Uh, it would come down, it would go around, and it would pause at the next level, go down, come around, go down. And you end up sometimes with a little witness mark where that end mill is going down in that one area and stuff. And what we're doing here is uh, we're ramping uh, so that one, when that bit comes down, it's only taking a small amount of material on one side of the bit and then coming back on the other side of the bit. So it's only really working on one side at a time. Uh, and then, you know, before it does its cut and everything, and it helps kind of instead of that straight plunge, because you know, when you plunge straight down, you're getting a lot of wear and tear on the tip of that bit and stuff, and we don't want to we don't want to burn it up or, or uh, you know uh, uh, have it go dull prematurely. So let's look at how this ramping action on this inside pocket. I'm going to slow down the speed a bit, and uh, let's preview this ramp. And notice that it starts to uh, cut and pocket out. And then when it does its um, next pass depth, let it go around and pocket out. Watch how it ramps down and then back and then starts the cut. That ramp down and back and then start the cut. And let's, uh, let's stop this here. And let's tilt this a little bit more so we can get a little bit more of a view on that. And slow this down even more here and as that bit comes it's going to ramp slowly and then it's going to pocket and on that's going to help extend the life of the bit uh, while it's working and everything uh, so once it finishes its passes uh, on this first pass then it's going to come in again and it's going to ramp uh, down and back that three quarter three quarter uh, to get to its full depth of cut which is the eighth inch and then you know it's gonna you know it's gonna come and cut and that's gonna help really instead of that straight plunge down so ramping is a good thing if you don't use ramping you should uh, you know uh, it's 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 good for the bits and stuff all right so let's uh, speed that back up and finish that up all right so uh, and this is a half inch cut so this should be the last pass right here. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and um, get uh, that outside pocket done. Now the outside pocket, I went uh, a quarter of an inch. I might go, I might go three eighths. I might go three eighths. Uh, and um, I haven't decided on that yet. Okay, now. Just so we can see this final piece and everything, let's do the profile toolpath. Um, sorry, my somebody must not realize I'm in class and my phone's going off. Let me turn that volume down. Okay, let's do our profile cut. The profile cut is uh, going to be, uh, you know, uh, cutting this bottom base out and everything. And keep this in mind. Uh, we're, this is a two-sided job. So generally, and we're going to have tabs, um, we're going to have tabs, um, oh, what am I trying to say? I apologize. Somebody is, I don't know what that volume is. There we go. Um, we're going to have tabs uh, holding this up. And so we may cut halfway through on one side, then halfway through on the other. Now for preview purposes, just for right now, I'm gonna cut this all the way out. Uh, I'm gonna cut this all the way out so we can see it with no tabs. But when I go to move things around and get things in position, we're gonna come back and, and adjust these tool paths accordingly. So on this one, I'm gonna cut all the way through the material, 0.75 with my quarter inch end mill. 
and I want to be on the outside of the cut. Uh, click OK. I want to be on the outside of the cut. Now, on the ramp, um, you have uh, options of uh, smooth, zigzag, spiral, uh, and uh, you know things like that. And uh, I generally, when I'm doing a profile cutout, I'll generally use a spiral toolpath. Uh, just the, the, the only analogy I can think of is think of a toilet flushing as it's going around it's going down you know as that water is going around it's going down and when it's doing that spiral as it's cutting it's literally dropping more and more and more and more and it's creating a continuous cut all the way around continuously dropping and stuff and when we when we do if we were to use a spiral uh, ramp if you were to use a spiral ramp this is the one occasion where you would want uh, to make you want you would want to come in and edit your tool, and have your pass uh, your plunge depth match your feed rate, uh, your plunge rate match your feed rate. And so I'm going to come up here and change this to 55 inches per minute uh, because I am using a spiral and I want it to go down and around at the same speed. I want it to go down and around. I don't want it to have to pause or slow down just to kind of drop, you know, and it get kind of jerky and all that stuff. I want a nice smooth transition around and down. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm not going to put tabs in here. This is just for preview. We'll, we'll set up the tabs and stuff here in just a moment. But let's go ahead and calculate this and let's preview this toolpath. And it's going to go as it starts going, it's going to get deeper and deeper and deeper. You'll watch this cut as it goes around. It's just continuously dropping a few thousandths of an inch. Uh, every few, you know, every little bit, it's dropping more and more and more all the way around um, until it uh, until it cuts out and everything. And uh, one, this is going to, again, stop from the witness marks, witness lines, uh, and things on uh, the um, outside of the cut. And number two, it's it's going to uh, less wear and tear on your bit because we're, we're, we're slowly taking a small amount of materials we go down working on that one side. Okay, so let's get rid of this and let's just look at this base. There's not a whole lot to the base and everything, right? Just a very simple box. Uh, let me get this uh, into position. Let me change um, the orientation here. Let me spin that around. There we go. And so the lid is going to literally pressure fit right on. We're going to have a nice little suction type pressure fit and all, uh, so that you can literally hold the the box by the lid and shake it, and it's not the bottom's not going to fall out. We're going to have a nice little pressure fit, nice little suction uh, and everything, and that lid's going to slip right over this lip. Now, like I said, my lip is only a quarter of an inch deep. Um, and, and that's, that's generally, um, for me, that's a, that's a pretty good depth. It doesn't need to be that deep, but, uh, it all depends. You know, I might go 0 0.3, 0 0.375. I'll never go more than half of the thickness of the material and everything for this little pin box and all, uh, but let that regenerate and everything. All right. So that's what our bottom of our box is going to look like. Really nothing to it. You know, we're going to add, I'm going to add a little bit of myself, a little bit of uh, kind of a gray felt or foam in there for my pen and stuff uh, and, and everything. So that's going to be the, um, the base. Now we're going to build the top. Uh, and now we're going to do our car, you know, whatever decorative carving we're going to do kind of, we're going to give it, we're going to dress it up a little bit. Uh, so first things first, I'm going to get my uh, things into position here. All right, now my lid is going to be highly based on my box, uh, very much so, uh, and very much so. In fact, that I'm going to actually take uh, these three vectors here, um, these two vectors, not three. And I'm going to double click on them, put them in transform mode, hold my control key down. I'm also going to hold my alternate key down because I want to bring this right straight down. Um, you know, with that. 
All right, now uh, let's let me move these down a little bit because I got to get my alignment pins and everything in here. I'm going to spread these out a little bit and all that. All right. I should be able, if I, if I can't get four out of this, uh, let's see if I can get four out of here, or not four, but two boxes. If I can, I'll make my 14 inch board a little bit, um, hold my control key down and let's move this over. Oh, I'm just a little shy. Just a little shy. All right, let's make my board 15 inches in length should be good. I don't recall ever having to go over 15. Let's go 15. Yeah, 15. Because I want to get I want to get at least two out of this, out of this, out of this. Um, if I put them a little closer together, I could probably get one more base and lid out of out of this as well out of this five and a half inch board but we'll, we'll leave it at that i'm not going to push it we got plenty of wood it's scrap wood it's not you know all that stuff all right now my lids okay my lids here uh basically we got a profile tool path we got a pocket cut okay now this pocket cut this is where uh and and uh this is where we're gonna give ourselves a little bit of an allowance so we get that nice pressure fit. If I don't give this pocket cut, this inner pocket cut, a little bit of an allowance, those two parts are going to be hard to put together. It's not going to be a pleasure to open at all or close. We want to give it just a small amount of an allowance so it's just a nice pressure fit uh, and, and all that stuff because I don't want any hardware on this, a nice clean looking box. So very simply, uh, we're going to um, create a pocket tool path. Now on this pocket tool path, this pocket tool path needs to at least be as deep as the outer lip pocket here, which in my case is a quarter of an inch. But we want to give it a little bit more. We don't want it. We don't want it when it when it when we when we go down. We don't want it bottoming it out uh, or anything like that. So I need to my pocket here to be at least uh, you know uh, 0 0.3, uh, maybe even three eighths or something. You know. Uh, we don't want it, like I said, we don't want it bottoming out, bottoming out and stuff. So uh, on my cut here, since I'm working with a quarter, I am going to go uh, 0.3125, which is uh, 5 sixteenths. All right, and um, still using that quarter inch in mill. Same bit, one bit is going to do this whole box, uh, other than if we're going to do any engraving, you know, V carving and stuff like that, then you would have a second bit. Uh, but as far as cutouts and pockets and all that, one bit. So it's a one one bit, one board pony. Okay, uh, so uh, quarter inch end mill. I'm still going to stick with my ramp of three quarters. It was a good distance. Uh, it's going to be offset. And this is going to be my lid. Inner pocket. 0.25 end mill. Let's click calculate. Perfect. Don't need to view it. We don't need to waste time viewing it. We'll look at it in a moment. Let's let's move on beyond this. Now, now we're going to get serious and we're going to lay out this project to actually carve uh, because this lid is going to get carved on the other side. I am going to do an inscription. I am going to do not not necessarily an inscription as far as name might be doing someone's name, but I want to do a nice V carving, a nice uh, maybe like a, a nice floral type pattern or something uh, in everything on this particular box. Now the next box we're going to make here in just a second, we're going to actually do a 3D model carving for the lid, which is pretty cool. Uh, so on this, let's go ahead and get set up now that we're going to carve this. I'm going to take a, a, my circle tool here and I'm going to draw in my waist area uh, where I've got some waste and everything, I'm going to create a quarter inch diameter uh, circle. Um, and over here as well, anywhere, they do not have to be symmetrical and everything uh, for the alignment pin method that we're going to be using. 0.25 diameter. The only thing that I want to uh, make sure of is that um, 
their position in a way that they don't get really cut into too much uh, when I'm cutting out and everything. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna move this over a little bit right here in the corner. And I got quite a bit of space in between here. My quarter inch end mill doesn't require that much space. Uh, so I'm gonna take my uh, lids here and just kind of bump them up a little bit. And then I'm gonna take everything and I'm gonna make sure it's centered on my board. There we go. Perfecto. Okay, now I've got my alignment pin holes and now I need to take my vectors that I wanna copy to the other side. Uh, I gotta take those over to the other side and uh, so I can create my inscription and carving and all that. Um, so uh, how much should you offset the cover pocket so that it's not a tight fit on the lower? We haven't gotten there yet, uh, Wayne, but we're gonna do a, a, a an allowance of maybe five thousandths of an inch, or a which is 0 0.005, or a 0 0.01, ten thousandths. Now I always start with a five thousandths allowance, uh, and uh, for that uh, that pocket and everything, um, and if I need to, uh, I can you know check my fit and all, and I can change it from there, because I can always cut out my. Uh, bottom piece before I cut out the mail, you know, because all these are going to get cut out. I can use vector selection orders and stuff, and I can do a test fit and everything on this if I want to. But five thousandths has been really good for me as far as a nice friction fit, um, and it all depends on your CNC machine. So, but we haven't gotten there yet. We, we're gonna we're gonna finish creating, setting up these tool paths and stuff, and come back and we're gonna clean up this inner lid pocket and our final profile. But let's go ahead and get all of our vectors and everything over. I want this to be a legitimate project, not just jumping around from left to right and all that stuff. So we've got our two alignment holes here for our alignment pins. Um, I'm going to, uh, let's move this one away from the edge just a little bit more. There we go. All right. I'm going to take the, uh, especially my outside profiles here. I'm going to take those. I need those so I know where my lid is and everything. And I'm going to copy them to the other side. On the bottom, same thing. If I, my outer profile cut, not that, not that pocket cut, my outer profile, I'm gonna copy those to the other side, okay? And um, now if I was gonna do an inscription on the uh, lid or the bottom, you know, or both, you know, things like that, that's where you, you know, we would do that. We would do it on the, on the bottom side. Um, and everything. Now you could also be backwards, you know, you could draw your tops, you know, the, the top side and all with all your carvings and then copy over and create the pockets and things on the bottom side. I just like making my pockets and stuff and then, uh, <coughs> cause all those get carved first. And then when I flip my board over, that's when I do all my decorative stuff on the outside and all. All right. So now, so I can differentiate my uh, lids from my uh, tops and all, I know that if I look at my top view here, that these up here are my lids and these down here are my bottoms because I can see the vectors on the other side. I don't need to copy any other vectors over here. I can, I can view that visual. But if you have, uh, you know, maybe you have a hard time seeing some things or something and you really can't see those very well and not too clearly and stuff, you can always take your inner vectors and just copy them over as well. You're not going to be using them for anything, but you can copy them over as well uh, and stuff. Um, uh, just so you have them on that other side so you know which one is my top, which one's my bottom type of deal. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, uh, you know, just... Uh, uh, come in here and I'm going to work in here. And so on my tops, which are, you know, cause I'm flipping along the Y, right? So imagine that board getting flipped over. Now my, uh, my tops, my lids to my boxes, they're on the top of the board up here. And then my bases are down below, um, on the tops. Let's go ahead and let's start laying out our, uh, our carving, our carving. Now, remember this inner area here, that's the area that's getting pocketed out to about three eighths of an inch deep. 
uh, or whatever depth you want. Uh, you know, as long as it's more than a quarter, especially on my lip, is it, my lip is a quarter of an inch, uh, you know, and everything. So I want, I don't want to bottom out. So uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.375, something like that. Uh, so keep that in mind when we're doing our decorative design. Now, for the decorative design, I'm going to import uh, a, a floral graphic. And you can even do models and text and things like that. We could do some raised text with a nice little checkered pattern. We could do all kinds of things. Uh, I'm going to look for an image uh, in my uh, pictures here. And uh, I've got some nice... Uh, Floral. Are they in my pictures or in my documents? I do this every time. Are they in my documents or are they in my desktop? Are they in this or are they in that? Uh, oh, that's my that's my trivet. We don't want that. All right, let's go to downloads. My laptop has everything organized when I'm out traveling on the shows. That one I want for the heart box. Keep that in mind. I'll, now it's in downloads. I'll remember where that one is. Uh, let's see here what I have for... I really don't have any ornate patterns. All right. Uh, let's go and grab one. So we're going to jump online. We're going to jump on the World Wide Web. Let's bring my web window over. Uh, got to give you a web shot uh, screen so you can see what I'm seeing. So let's give uh, that would be my web shot. There we go. I'll switch to that. All right. So I want a uh, a nice little uh, flourish vector, and I might even uh, be specific uh, rectangle vector and that way when I'm looking at my uh, images and everything um, nah, I'm not going to be that specific uh, let's get rid of rectangle should have had these downloaded uh, ahead of time and all all right, so my box is long and narrow, uh, and I, I want, if I'm going to do a, uh, a carving or a pattern or something, I want uh, something that will um, adhere to that very well. Uh, it could be a combination of two uh, particular patterns kind of put together uh, and things, and uh, this, is, uh, this pin box is going to be for a guy, so I'm not going to make one with hearts on it. Uh, you know, if it was a ring box or something, I might do that. So let's see what we've got here. And we're going to kind of mix it up a bit. And think outside the box, uh, you know, this one pattern is going to get multiplied over uh, quite a few times to create a just a continuous pattern all the way through. Um, and I want something... I guess flourish probably wasn't the best uh, uh, thing to look up for something a little bit more masculine and and professional, you know, a professional looking pen box. But uh, let's see, we we might luck out here. All right, so let's do this. Uh, I'm actually going to go tribal. Let's go tribal. And the keywords, uh, the keyword here is vector. Um, when we are working with, um, you know, looking for things, uh, you know, to help us that we can bring in and trace and all, um, the keyword vector will help kind of narrow a lot of things down. There we go. Now we're getting. Um, somewhere and I actually like this third pattern here I actually like this third diamond pattern right here uh, so let's go ahead and uh, save that and 
and let's head back over here. All right, so I'm going to import that image uh, for tracing. And I'm really only wanting this third uh, pattern here. So we're gonna go uh, to our trace tool. I'm using the black and white trace. Let's turn the fading off so we can see it a little bit better. It is a very poor, poor image, uh, very pixelated, but uh, that's fine. And actually looking at the pattern, I could probably just redraw it, but I'm gonna be turning up my noise filter. Uh, I do want sharp corners, so I'm actually gonna increase my corner uh, fit uh, to 100. I want a nice sharp points and things uh, and all on that corner fit. I'm, I'm increasing the noise filter quite a bit because there's a lot of pixelation here. Uh, but let's see, uh, I want to get the best fill possible right there. Let's preview that. That's good. Apply and close. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and come up to my layers tab up here and turn that bitmap layer off. Now, uh, the image, uh, when it was traced, it was all grouped together. I'm going to ungroup that. I'm going to ungroup that. And I'm just going to delete what I don't want. So those items can go. This can go. And this is the pattern that I want. Now, let's analyze this pattern a bit, you know, because uh, let's, take a, let's take a look at things. So looking at the consistency because of the poor pixelation and stuff, um, you know, I could uh, spend a little bit of time, you know, cleaning this up because, you know, I'd actually like this to have, uh, you know, sharp corners and stuff and not these kind of broken, like this one's all funky, uh, this one's flat, you know, uh, this one's, you know, the point is, is jumping off. And that was based on the tracing, right? So there's going to be times where we are tracing images, and let's get this uh, full screen here. Uh, there's going to be times when we're tracing images that we have to do cleanup. Now, there's a couple of ways that I could do this. Um, one is I could actually try my uh, extend, not extend tool, I'm sorry, <laughs> my curve fit tool, um, which uh, will, if I, if I select this here, and let's really zoom in, especially down here. Let's zoom in and let's see what this curve fit does for us. Uh, if I open up my uh, curve fit tool, fit, which fits curves to vectors and all, I want straight lines, uh, a very tight tolerance, and then the max, I want to make sharp corners, okay? But the maximum angle, right? The maximum angle, uh, most of these angles are, you know, um, uh, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, you know, things like that. So I'm going to go... I'm going to go forty five and let's take a look. I'm not going to replace the vectors. I just wanted to draw the new lines and let's take a look at what we got here. So here on this acute angle here, uh, it really tightened it up. It did a very nice job there uh, here. Uh, it didn't because I didn't have a point on here, uh, so it didn't it didn't clean that up. Now it did, uh, you know, kind of straighten these lines up for me and stuff, uh, which is actually pretty pretty good. Um, this did not do anything for me on that curve fit. Uh, looking at these uh, new lines, nice sharp lines versus these kind of rounded jagged. I've got some nice sharp lines going in here. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up using that and that's going to get 90% of my vector cleaned up for me. And then I may just have to come back and adjust a few small areas and stuff. I mean, looking at this diamond, you know, a nice um, uh, pointed straight lines here versus the, uh, the other line, which was all over the place and things. So, um, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that because I, this time I want to replace replace the selected vectors. And I want to go ahead and click on Preview. And that's going to replace all my vectors for me, giving me a much cleaner, sharper, crisper pattern. Crisper pattern. 
Uh, and the only thing that I've got to do is um, clean up these things. And because these are straight lines and stuff, uh, it's, it's, it's really actually not that hard to go through and clean up the few things. Um, if I come in here and I go into node editing, I can come into this vector here and remove this span. Right click on, put my mouse right on the line between the two nodes and delete that span. And from there, I can go over to my extend tool. And with my extend tool, I can click here and then here and it's going to bring that line and connect those two together where I need to be connected. And let's do that one more time because what I would do is while I was in node editing mode, I would go through and I would delete those spans that I need to delete. Let's find another one down here so we can uh, do a couple. Let's delete this one. And let's see here. Let's go ahead and delete this one as well. We'll do three of them. Now I can take my extend tool and I can just go click, click, oops, click, click. All right, on one, click, click on two, click here, click there on three, you know, and I can tighten them up and stuff. And so now, I mean, other than uh, a couple of, uh, I've got a line here that I need to fix and all and a couple of corners and stuff. Uh, I've only got like three to five things that I could do. And when you're when when you're working uh, through this on your own, um, it, it doesn't take long, just a few minutes. But explaining it and stuff, uh, you know, it does. And I want to try to keep the time down. So I'm not really going to stress too much over these. But I do want to straighten out this line here. Uh, and I would like these lines to be in line up here as well. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take and go into node editing. And I'm going to select this node right here. And I'm going to come down and hold my shift key and select this node down here second. And I'm going to hit the letter X on my keyboard and pull that line into alignment. Okay. Now uh, with that, and let's kind of zoom into this. Uh, I could, if I hit the letter sh keyboard shortcuts, uh, I'm already in node editing. So uh, I can just go ahead and right click and delete span delete span, hit the escape key on my keyboard to get out of that tool, grab my extend tool, come over here and click, 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 done. You know, same thing over here, hit the letter N on my keyboard to go into node editing. Uh, that's the keyboard shortcut and uh, close this tool here. First hit the escape key. Uh, then I can hit the letter N and I can um, right click and delete. Oops. Make sure your mouse is on the line. There we go. Delete this span up here and delete this span here as well. Hit the escape key to get out of that tool. Click my extend tool and click, 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 click. Hit my escape key, go into the letter N, grab this here, right click. And I could hit the letter D, you know, keyboard shortcut it all the way through, but I'll right click. Delete the span, hit the escape key to get out of that tool, select my extend tool, and click, click. And of course, you know, you can go through bam, 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 and kind of knock these things out. So um, let's do this one while we're here. I'm going to get anal about it. Uh, delete the span, hit the escape key, grab my extend tool, and click, click. So, you know, you can go through and really clean things up. I'm not going to fuss anymore over this. It's going to be fine for this tutorial. Uh, but um, I'll most likely, before I carve this, I'll most likely go back and clean up these last two or three areas and stuff like that. But let's go ahead and get this shape. Uh, now, when I extended, if we look at this here, when I extended those lines, bam, 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 all those lines, it extended and connected them, but it didn't join them. Okay, it connected those two lines, essentially, but it didn't join them and, and make it a closed vector. So notice now that on this object here, I've got 25 closed vectors, but there's four that are still open that didn't close from the things that I was working with and stuff. So I want to click the join tool to close them up. Okay, so that way they're not open because otherwise I'm going to get an error when I go to create my uh, carving and stuff. 
All right, let's get this. I'm gonna hit the letter G on my keyboard. That's group, uh, U for ungroup, G for group. And I want this centered in this rectangle here. So I'm gonna use my alignment tool, selecting this inner object first, the outer perimeter last, and go to my alignment tool and center. And now I'm going to, using my uh, scale, uh, double clicking and going into transform mode. I'm going to scale this up by, I'm going to, but I'm going to hold my shift key to keep it centered while I shift and that's going to be good there. Now, a very cool thing that we can do here. There's two options that we have. One, we can carve this uh, where, you know, between the lines, this pattern gets cut out or two, we can put a perimeter around it, a nice little border, nice little decorative border around it and where it'll carve opposite. So let's look at both. Okay. And then we're going to pause after I create this to answer questions that you guys have. There's some, uh, there's, there's some questions popping up and, uh, that, so, uh, let's stop for just a moment. Um, William Edlin, is everyone seeing what Laney is selecting from such as from his downloads earlier? I do see his web shot, but didn't see his folders while he was searching. Okay, yeah, you wouldn't see my folders, William. Uh, my folders aren't do not show up on the screen. Only the web shot or the that in my folders I was basically searching inside of uh, my downloads my documents my desktop looking for some type of flourish type pattern and I didn't see anything that I liked from my collection so we went on to the web uh, and pulled it off uh, so you wouldn't have saw you wouldn't have saw my um, you wouldn't have saw my menus uh, my, my folders and stuff you should have saw the web shot where I grabbed this uh, image, this tribal image, uh, and uh, the actual uh, design screen here. Okay. So let's go in here. Now I'm going to go ahead and create the boundary around this um, uh, just so I have it, but I'm going to do both tool paths to see which one kind of appeals to me more you know, type of thing. And so uh, I'm going to open up my rectangle tool and, um, you know, for the rectangle tool, let's go ahead and I'm going to go five by one. Oh, that's too short. Uh, let's go 5.75. I don't know why I said five and I hit six. 5.75 and uh, one inch is going to be perfect. Uh, so I'll leave that. Well, daggummit. Here, let's do this. The No, I don't want to stretch those radiuses. Bear with me a second. I'm going to actually use the rectangle tool for this. Uh, let's go another inch. So 6.375. Oh, you were there. Six and a half. There we go. I don't want that big of a radius. And actually, I actually don't want a radius at all. Uh, sh corners, sharp corners. I want sharp corners on this. There we go. There we go. Um, Looking at my distance from here to here, everything looks good. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. All right, so let's look at this. Uh, let's look at this pattern and see which of the two options uh, we would like. And I might, since I'm making two boxes here, I might do one one way and one the other, or I would just you do a different pattern altogether. I'm gonna put some text in this lid just so you can see the text part of it. But let's go over here. Let's create a V carve toolpath. Uh, the first one that I'm going to do is just on uh, those vectors there. Uh, no flat depth. 
Uh, I, these are small enough that they're not going to cut, uh, you know, more than, you know, a quarter of an inch, if that. They're not going to cut into my pocket on the other side. Uh, I'm using my 60 degree V-bit. And if I was worried about it cutting through, uh, then I could come in. If I was worried about it cutting through, then I could come in and use a wider angle bit. I could use a 90 degree V-bit instead of my 60. But I'll use my 60 for this. And this is gonna be my, uh, I'll just call this um, box one uh, lid design. 60 DEG V bit. All right, let's go ahead and calculate this. And let's preview that toolpath. Okay, now we're not gonna get a really a full effect on what it's going to look like until we do our profile toolpath to kind of you know cut out and see what it's going to look like and also you know you know you may say well what about you know these edges and stuff I usually don't make my designs I could we could stretch this out so it's a little wider right you know that's it's it can, it's scalable we could stretch it out so it's a wider pattern and everything but um, I usually don't worry about having to like fill the gap, you know, type of thing um, and, and all. It's not really, uh, you, know, you know, important, you know, in that way. But let's create a profile toolpath. Now, in this toolpath, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create it properly for this project. Now, this toolpath is only going to be cutting halfway through my material. I'm going to be using my quarter inch end mill. It's going to be on the outside of the line. And I am going to add tabs to this. My tabs are going to be a quarter of an inch wide and an eighth of an inch tall. No, I'm sorry, a sixteenth of an inch tall. I want a total tab of an eighth of an inch, but I'm going to have an eighth of an inch on this side, an eighth of an inch on the other side, uh, and that's going to make a total thickness. Let's read. Let's let's say that one more time, Lainey. I'm going to have a sixteenth of an inch thick tab on the bottom of the board, a sixteenth of an inch tab on the top of the board, and they're going to meet in the middle, and that's going to give me a total thickness of an eighth of an inch tab, which is what I want my finished tab to be. So a sixteenth of an inch. Let's click on Edit Tabs here, and I'm going to go ahead and throw one, two, three, four. Okay. And we're going to be doing this on all the profile cuts, but I want to create this one specifically because I just want to see what this pattern looks like. And let's go ahead and calculate. Uh, let's add a ramp. And I'm going to do a spiral ramp. Make sure that my plunge rate and my feed rate do match one another. And click Calculate. Click Calculate. All right, let's preview that. Oh, I should have turned the um, speed up a bit, or my resolution down a bit, one of the two. Okay, so let's, uh, let's zoom this in. All right, so pattern option number one. This is going to be option number one, where it just kind of V-carves this pattern in there. Nothing really exciting about it and all that stuff and all. And I may make it wider so it looks a little bit more appropriate. Who knows? Let's look at option number two. Option number two, V-card toolpath. This time, I'm going to select both my outer border and the inner. Not when I say outer border, I'm talking about the border that we created around that middle pattern. Uh, it's still, uh, I may have some depth issues here in these wide areas that might cut into my pocket if so then i will set a flat depth accordingly but right now we'll leave it without a flat depth for right now let's calculate this tool path and let me turn down my simulation quality just a little bit so it's a little bit faster um, and let's look at option number two I like option number two, but I don't. I, I need to give it some flat depth. I don't want it to go that deep on the outer edges here. 
So we're going to come back into option number two and we're going to set a flat depth. And I'm going to set that depth to an eighth of an inch. Point one two five, and uh, for those of you that might not know the decimals uh, and things like that, you can always type in a uh, fraction and hit the equal key on your keyboard, and it will convert it to the decimal for you. All right, so uh, we're going to flatten this out at an eighth of an inch, and I do have some flat areas here, and I have a choice: do I want to use a flat area clearance tool, or do I want my bit to flatten everything out? Um, my V bit, should I say? And I think that I'm gonna opt to use a let my V bit just do the work and all, and I, th I think I'm good with that. So uh, if I decide against it, uh, then I'll use an eighth inch end mill or something. But it's got to be a small enough end mill to really make it worth my while to do a bit change. <clears throat> so we're gonna call this uh, box one lid design option two all right 60 deg v bit all right let's reset this and let's look at this one last time with that flat depth in there um, and let's see what we think Okay, I like that, but I am going to make it wider. So let's take, we're going to actually scale the whole thing. Just select this, double click on it to put it in transform. Oops, put it in transform mode, double click on it. And all I'm going to do is hold my shift key down and I'm going to grab this top middle and I'm just going to pull it out a little bit. Just pull it out a little. And I am going to. Um, with that selected, I am going to group this together for a moment, these two items. Hold down my shift key and grab this outer perimeter, and I'm going to make sure it's centered in that, which I knew it wasn't. It was just off a little bit. Okay. Okie dokie. Okay. So I like that design. I'm going to recalculate uh, this toolpath here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of uh, design number one. I'll leave it in there. Uh, but I like this design here um, for my box. I like this pattern here for my box. Uh, if I, you know, I may end up uh, doing, uh, I may end up giving it uh, some kind of uh, dyed color or something, you know. Uh, give it a nice, uh, you know, dark brown or something, you know, look or what have you. I'm not sure yet, but you know, uh, that's that's the lid that I'm gonna go with. All right, so I like that. <laughs> Jeff, I wish I could start over for you, buddy. Um, all right, I like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these vectors and I'm going to be making uh, two boxes the same uh, in this case. So I'm just going to uh, drop that over and I'm going to, while they're, while, well, let's uh, try that again. Let's hold down your control key. There we go. And while that is selected, I'm going to hold down my shift key, grab this outer box, go into my alignment tool, and just make sure it's centered. Uh, it is good to go there. Okay, so now I've got my lids, I've got my bottoms. Uh, I'm not going to do any little inscription or anything in here. Arr. Yeah, let's do this and let's talk about small fonts. I, if I'm going to do an inscription, it's going to be small. So now this is going to change the game up for me and everything. I want to do a small script font. Uh, but what this means for me is that the lines of my letters are going to be really small. Uh, so let's see here. And I might do something like Nah, I 
can't call it handcrafting. And let's go quarter and let's get this um, into position down here. Let's go back in there and center that up. All right, I'm going to select that uh, text there. I'm going to hold down my shift key, grab this uh, perimeter here, and go into my alignment tool and make sure it is centered. There we go. And on my text, I have some overlapping lines that I need to contend with. Um, and uh, so I'm going to convert this text into a vector. Uh, it's also referred to as converting to curves. And that's going to break this up into text. So you want to make sure you've got your spelling correct. You want to make sure that you've got your font that you want to choose. Because once you convert it to a vector, it's no longer text. Um, and uh, now that I, I have uh, these uh, selected uh, on my overlaps, there's two ways that I could do this. The quickest way is welding, but I could also use my interactive trim tool. I could use my scissors and trim away the lines you know, so on and so forth with our scissor tool, interactive trim tool. But if I simply just select all of the outer perimeters of the lines that are overlapping, I do not need the insides of the letters and all. If I go through and select, that one's good. This, this, this. Go through and select. You do not need the inner vectors, just the overlapping. And that's the last one. Uh, I can go over to my weld tool and let's take a close look at this. I can take and select my weld tool and that will remove the overlaps and weld everything together into one for me. So now I can select my entire thing and group them together as one. Make it easy for me to select. We're good to go. Now, um, I'd actually like uh, this text to be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and scale it down a bit. Now, I this is going to be super small. Very, very small. This means that I'm not going to get a whole lot of definition in this cut. Um, if I use my 60 degree V bit, I'm probably going to be carving just a few thousandths of an inch into the bottom of this. Uh, and stuff. Um, in this case, I do want a little bit of definition and just a little bit of depth. Remember, I don't. This is the bottom of the board. I've only got a quarter of an inch of material to work with, and everything. Um, so, but I do want to use. I, I believe that everyone should have in their arsenal of tools a 60 degree V bit, a 90 degree V bit, a 120 degree V bit and a 22 degree V bit. Those uh, together there, those tools um, together, uh, that arsenal of tools, should I say, those will do the uh, pretty much all the things you want to do. Wide letters that you can't have too much of depth, especially if you're carving in acrylics and things. Small, tiny letters where you need a little bit of depth because your 60 or 90 just ain't cutting it type of thing. And either the 22 or 11 degree, you know, it's one, six and one, half dozen, another. Um, but I think those four V bits, 22, 60, 90, and 120 are nice good bits to have in your arsenal of tools. Um, when you're milling and things, and from my, in my case, uh, if I do in, in you know uh, craft this inscription, and I can go even smaller, um, you know, with these letters and things, but uh, I would be using a 22 degree V bit. So let's go ahead and create that tool path. So it's going to be a V carve. There's not going to be a flat depth, and I'm going to be using a 22 degree V bit. And do I have it on this computer? Uh, no. New V bit, quarter inch, 
22 degree uh, point one five oops four twenty four is good and all of those settings are the same okay twenty two degree v bit uh, in our arsenal of tools here and this is going to be the box one uh, it's going to be both inscriptions if I'm doing it on one I'll do it on both so box uh, Twenty-two degree V bit. Okay, so if I calculate this out and I preview this cut, uh, let's go ahead now and let's let's really zoom into this. It's going to be pixelated when I zoom into it, so uh, bear with it because I got the I got the quality turned down. But as I move my mouse into uh, the cut here, um, I'm able to see my depth. Now remember, I'm working down here the numbers the numbers uh, as I move the mouse over it's showing my, my depth of cuts or my depth basically and so remember I'm working from the bottom of my material so my Z right here by touching off on this uh, side of the board here is at three quarters that's how thick my material is as I go into my cut it's showing me you know now I'm at 0. 0.6505 so I do my math you know, three quarters minus 0.65, you know, 0.75 minus 0.65 is 0.1 um, and things. And so, you know, in that deep area there, I'm at 0.1. Uh, I'm only uh, 30 thousandths here in this area. So even with the 22 degree V bit, and let's clean this up. Let's, let's reset this preview and uh, let's uh, change that preview simulation quality back to extremely high to get rid of that pixelation. And let's preview that one more time. There we go. And so, um, you know, we're not, uh, you know, we're not too deep. Um, I'm not getting into my pocket and everything. I'm not exceeding my cut depth. And I could make this inscription even smaller, whatever the case may be. But uh, 22 degree V bit is going to be a better choice. Then rather than if I use my 60, if I use if I if I were to come in here and use a 60 degree V bit uh, for this, then I'm going to end up with a shallower cut. So if I reset this preview and preview this selected toolpath again, my design that the, the inscription is going to be exactly the same, no doubt about it. But the uh, cut depth is going to vary. I'm only about 30 thousandths of an inch where I was at 0.1. You know, um, so that 60 is going to make things even smaller. And, and that might work for you. You know, uh, you, you might want it shallower and all. But I, if I'm going to do an inscription and stuff, I want to be able to, you know, especially with small, small text. And I mean, imagine if I got even smaller than this. Uh, you know, it, it, if I was using a 60, it would, I'm at 30 thousandths, 30 thousandths is, is not much. Um, and you know, it's a 30 second, basically 0 0.31, 0 0.3125. Um, and, uh, so it's, it's not a whole lot, uh, uh, there, um, with my 60 degree view bit and I'd get more definition out of the 22. So, um, it all depends on what, you know, what you're looking for, but those four bits, 22, 69 or 30 ah, 22 60 90 and 120 degree we bet both would be uh, good bits to uh, to utilize all right now let's 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 look at our project here as a whole and let's take our inscription and I'm gonna hold down my control key I'm gonna drag it over here and get centered on that as well I have smart snapping on, so I was able to snap to the center of that. All right, let's create our toolpath, but what am I missing? I'm missing alignment holes. Alignment holes. So I need to go back over to side one. Now, I hope you know on box two, I'm not going to take this much detail because it's the same step, same type of thing, just a different shape. We're going we're gonna to make a second box with a 3D model lid. But as far as the pockets and things like that, it's going to be about the same. I'm going to go over, but I'm not going to go into long detail because I just went into some long detail here. All right. On this, I need to take and copy to the other side. 
Now I can go back over. All right, let's go ahead. These are my bottom. This is my bottom, uh, which is technically the tops, uh, you know, of my box and all that stuff, but uh, the bottom of my board. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and create the tool pass. Now, these two holes here, these alignment holes, these are going to get cut in the waste board, okay? In the preview here, you see it getting cut on the bottom of the board. No, it's going to get cut in the waste board. I'm going to explain that here in just a second, but let's create the tool path. Now, you could either do a drilling tool path with a quarter inch end mill, boom, boom, or if you're CNC, you might have a little flex or anything and you need a precise hole, you know, for your alignment pins and stuff, use a pocket tool path with an undersized bit. Use an eighth inch end mill, create a pocket tool path with it. That'll give you a precise quarter inch diameter hole. If I use a quarter inch diameter bit with a drilling tool path, if I have a CNC that has a little bit of flex to it, you know, when it comes down and presses down and that tip of that bit, if it's not dull, you know, if it's not too sharp and all, there's going to be a slight amount, just a slight amount of flex as it, as it uh, pierces the surface and then it's going to straighten back out and cut. Well, what's going to happen is, is that little flex as that bit pierces that center or that hole, as it starts to straighten back out, it, now it's creating a little bit of an oblong. So your diameter it's just a little bit bigger. It might get a little wobble. So if you ever, if you experience that, if you've ever done any hole drilling, and your holes are, you know, a little bit, uh, yeah, I'm gonna be ch I'm gonna be changing back to the 22 degree V bit. Uh, the hole, uh, if your holes are not, they're not coming out quite right. You know, they're a little, uh, you know, they're a little loose fitting, you know, and things. Uh, try using a pocket cut tool path with an undersized tool. So if I'm doing a quarter inch diameter hole, I do a pocket tool path with an eight inch, hole, eight, eighth inch bit, you know, and things. Now, if your CNC is rigid and you don't have any problems with flex and your quarter inch holes or quarter inch holes, then you're good to go. So keep that in mind. Now I'm going to do a drilling tool path. And this is only going to be a quarter of an inch deep. I'm going to use pecking. Uh, for this operation and uh, I'm going to retract above the, uh, the the start depth. I'm going to pull out those little chips, you know, on those. It's only a quarter of an inch deep. Um, I'm not going to dwell at the bottom of each cut. There's no need to dwell. And uh, I can go ahead and this is going to be called, and I really named this one, Waste Board Waste board alignment holes point two five in mil. This tells me that this is these are the holes that get cut in my waste board. Okay, it's important because these get cut in the waste board. We're gonna talk about all this uh, in a moment. But let's go through and clean up our tool pass. I got to change my bit uh, to the appropriate bit on one. I got to create some things. So let's start and let's get these things in order. This is the bottom side here. Uh, lid design number one, I'm not going to use. So to get rid of the confusion, I'm just going to delete it. My profile cut needs to go all the way at the bottom here. And this is going to be my <clears throat> rename. It's going to be my outer profile. And it's using a quarter inch end mill. And since, and since uh, I'm gonna open it back up because all of my outer perimeters are gonna get cut to that deep. Three eighths of an inch deep. They're all gonna have tabs, which I'm gonna add my rest of my tabs in here, but all of them are getting put under this tool path for the bottom side. So let's go ahead and edit our tabs. And let's go in and go one, two, well, I don't necessarily need four tabs uh, on these, um, <clears throat> but uh, I mean, I could do two at the ends and all, but uh, I'm going to uh, put four tabs on them anyway. All right, so my profile tool path uh, is cutting three eighths of an inch deep, halfway through my material. I'm cutting halfway through on one side, 
halfway through one another. That way my tabs end up in the middle of my board holding these parts into place. I'm gonna be cutting on the outside of the line. I've got a sixteenth of an inch tab on one side. I'm gonna have a sixteenth of an inch tab on the other. They're meeting in the middle and that's gonna give me an eighth inch thick tab. I am using spiral ramp with this and my tool feed rate and plunge rate do match and the only reason they match is because I'm using a spiral toolpath. The other the other ramps and all you wouldn't you wouldn't have them match. It would be a lower plunge rate than a you know. So we're gonna calculate that toolpath. All right. Uh, wasteboard alignment hole that's going up at the top of the list. Now my design, my uh, box lid one design here, uh, that's going to be this design and this design. I'm cutting an eighth of an inch deep with a 60 degree V bit. I'm not going to use an eighth inch end mill or anything to do a flat area clearance tool. I'm just going to let my V bit do it because it's going to give me a little bit of a little bit of a texture in there and stuff. The V bit actually does a pretty decent job of flattening things out, uh, and I'll have a little bit of a texture and stuff, but uh, it's fine. It's all part of the design. So I'm going to use a 60 degree V bit. Uh, for this, we've got the name on there, so we're going to go ahead and calculate. Okay, and then my box inscription, I'm going to be using my 22 degree V bit. And let's select this other inscription here, and we're going to calculate that zero start depth, no flat depth, uh, 22 degree V bit, and calculate. And this is gonna take care of all of my tool paths for the bottom side. So if we were to preview all the tool paths, preview, uh, let's, for time's sake, just turn this quality down a bit. Uh, preview all the tool paths. Yes, I'm in class. All right, so that's going to be my uh, cuts. Now, these two holes that you see on this side here, those are getting cut into the wasteboard. They will not be getting cut into this project board on this bottom side here, okay? All right, let's flip this back over to side one now and come back to our 2D view. On side one, let's start with our alignment holes. Now these do get cut in uh, the uh, top of the board. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna, for me, it's gonna be a drilling tool path. And on this one, on this one, I always, on my board, uh, I always cut three eighths of an inch deep because I use a half inch uh, dowel, quarter inch uh, metal shelf pin dowel. And that uh, I'm cutting a quarter of an inch into the wasteboard and three eighths of an inch here, that gives me a, uh, you know, I've got my uh, extra eighth of an inch of room, so I'm not bottoming it out, bottoming out on my shelf pins. So my two alignment holes, uh, I'm going to select my quarter inch end mill. And remember what I said about undersized bit pocket cuts if you need to type of thing. Uh, I'm gonna use uh, pecking, and this is gonna be my side one alignment holes 0.25 mm. okay and now let's uh that's going to be move that to the top of the list all right so let's look at what we created here okay so uh the pocket cut all right the pocket cut let's open that up because that's going to be both this these two vectors here, these are my bottoms. This is my pocket cut for my bottom. Uh, and uh, it's cutting a quarter of an inch deep. Um, remember, you could go heavier if you need to. You just gotta make that adjustment here uh, as well on the, on the lid. 
uh, if you go deeper and stuff. Um, and if you feel that, you know, quarter of an inch, you know, your, your lid's not getting that much of a bite, you know, on the base, you can go a little deeper, go three eighths, you know, and stuff. Uh, using a quarter inch end mill, uh, I'm going to use a ramp and this is going to be my uh, box base. Outer, O-U-T-T-E-R. Hmm, I think there's a two T's there, but we'll leave it there. Uh, outer pocket. Correct me if I'm wrong in the spelling. Um, O-U-T-T-E-R-E-R -E -R or O-U-T-E-R? 0.25 in mil. That's terrible that your mind goes so blank, uh, a simple word that you can't remember how to spell it. Um, all right, so that's going to be that my inner cut my pin base inner cut we're going to open that back up and we're going to select this one because we're going to do both of them at the same time uh, this is cutting and this pocket's cutting a half inch deep uh, quarter inch end mill uh, raster cutting i'm using a ramp in here and it's already named so i'm just gonna all i did was add this vector to it we're going to click calculate excellent and um the final profile i've already uh, let's see here. Let's open that up. So that's going to be that, that, oops, not that one. Inner one. This and this. All right. So this is cutting three eighths of an inch deep. It's cutting halfway through on this side, quarter inch in mill all the way through. We're going to add tabs. Now, edit tabs. Now, I could go in here and add tabs, bam, 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 you know, right, and stuff, and try to get those tabs exactly where I got the other ones, but I'm going to do one better. I'm going to take a second, and I'm while those are selected, I'm going to delete those. Boom, gone. I'm going to move back over to side two real quick, and I'm going to grab my profiles here, because I've already created the toolpath with the tabs on these. So I'm going to right click and copy them back over to the other side. And now that I've done that, now that I've done that, my tabs, when I go to add tabs, they're going to be there. Ta-da! All right. So I got my 16th of an inch tabs. Uh, I got my spiral ramp, my tool path, plunge, and feed rate match. Everything is checked off there. And this is going to be my uh, side one outer profile. And I will be um, answering your questions here in a second before we move on to box two. Outer profile. Oh, come on. All right, so my outer profile is done. We'll calculate that up. Make sure we'll need to put that at the bottom of the list. Now my inner pocket for the lid. Inner pocket for the lid. So that's gonna be these guys. Uh, my outer pocket here was a quarter of an inch. So on this, I'm gonna give myself some room. I'm gonna go uh, 0.3125 so I don't bottom out. And now is my allowance, my pocket allowance, okay? Uh, we want a negative number. Uh, negative goes over the line, positive away from the line. Uh, I want to I want to overcut this ever so slightly so that it slides around this. Okay. Uh, and so for me, I use a negative 0 0.005. And if I find that my fit is too tight, on that first set of boxes or what have you, you know, um, uh, you know, I might do one box as a test, just like you know, run a test on a, you know, it's just a single box or something, get my fit and everything, make sure it's right. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, you know, it's five thousandths of an inch for me or 0 0.01, and depending on tolerances and things like that, sometimes you know, sometimes five thousandths isn't enough, you know, it's 0 0.01. Uh, you know, it all, it just all depends and things, uh, you know, on your, on your CNC and all. Uh, but 
I'm going to use a uh, allowance of five thousandths of an inch uh, just so I get that nice friction fit. And if it's you know if it's too tight, I'll end up doing a little bit of sanding because uh, and then on my next boxes that I cut because uh, I'll end up making out of these fifteen inch boards, uh, I'll end up making you know. Um, uh, a few of these and everything because they're they're nice gifts to give away gifts to sell or there wouldn't be a gift if you're selling it nice things to sell at the you know the markets and with a pin in them of course uh and stuff uh, or empty you know if somebody wanted them empty so but i'm going to do a five thousandths of an inch negative five thousandths we're going to calculate that tool path now let's look at this let's look at this tool path and let's go into a solid view here solid state and what we're doing is we're overcutting this pocket ever so slightly so that this lip right here, this, this lip fits right over this lip. Okay. Basically, let me grab my inner pocket. Where's my inner pocket? Right here. So this um, overcut, let's turn off the profile. There we go. Hold on, got the wrong one. There we go. What's wrong with that picture? Bear with me. Yeah, that's right. I'm. I mean, I, I was. I was losing my mind there for a minute. Uh, pin box, inner cut, uh, I don't need that turned on. There we go. All right, so this white area here, this lip here, actually, let's turn that one back on. Uh, this white area here, that's going to be my lip that's raised up. And this pocket here is going around. It's going to be fitting right over this white area here. And um, the uh, I'm overcutting. With that five thousandths of allowance, I'm overcutting this cut ever so slightly, so that it's not an exact fit, and it, it, it you know it's a pressure fit. It's not exact. I'm not trying to beat the two parts together. I'm giving myself a little bit of a clearance. Now, that 0.05 is not a whole lot, uh, and so you're going to either be going between 0 0.005 negative or 0 0.01. You know, you're either going to be doubling this or, you know, singling it. Uh, but uh, just going to be a small allowance and everything. All right. So with all of our tool paths calculated now, um, except for inner pocket, need to grab this one as well and recalculate this tool path. There we go. All right. Let's go ahead and preview both sides. Preview all sides. Let that preview out. And while that's previewing out, let's go back up and answer some questions. Oh my goodness, you guys have been typing like crazy. Um, <clears throat> so Jeff uh, uses mahogany wood and looks good on the screen, absolutely. Um, yeah, Jeff, you're talking about in the preview, uh, you use the mahogany. Absolutely. Um, like, uh, let that finish up. Uh, I believe you're referring to, you use the uh, mahogany. Yeah. Looks good. All right. Now, do we notice something, anything uh, wrong with this picture? Um, besides, uh, you know, we notice anything missing or wrong with this picture? Well, my tabs are missing, for one, and my bit is just coming into my alignment pin here. I need to move that back because my alignment pin is not wood; it's metal. It's a metal shelf pin. Um, so let me make a small adjustment.
now that I've made that change, it's absolutely crucial that I come back over here and delete these two alignment holes right here. Come back to side one and recopy these. And my alignment pins could be in the middle of this board. They could be here and here. They could be over here. They do not have to be in any kind of order. I just use the diagonal waste areas and stuff. They, I could have, I could have one hole here and one hole here. You know, they don't have to be over pulled in these corners like I've got them and stuff. Um, but we need to copy these to the other side uh, so that they're in the new placement where I just placed them. And I need to uh, recalculate. Um, the tool pass for the new positions. Okay, let's look at uh, let's look at my profile cut for side one, and let's look at uh, what may have happened here. Right here was my problem. That's why my tabs were missing. Three quarters, not three eighths. So this needs to be three eighths. 0.375 calculate that's what this preview is good for all right so one last time let's preview all the tool paths for all sides okay so let's go through here um, uh, bum, 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 bum. when you went to your tool database didn't see the drop down just the mouse on the workpiece i think it was what william was talking about okay ken uh so that's right uh the uh previewer is not showing the drop down menus uh, on the tool database uh, i'll remember that here in just a minute when we do side two uh, I'll make sure I change over to a different screen um, so that you're able to see it. Okay, uh, I'll remember that. Okay, thanks uh, guys for letting me know that. Um, yeah, I've got on my selector, on my screen selector, I actually have it showing the application window, the Vetric application window instead of the screen, and it's only showing the main uh, Vetric application window, it's not uh, showing the drop down menus and things like that. So I will remember that for this next box that we're about to make. All right. No tabs, no tabs. Everybody's telling me no tabs, and that the tabs were cut out because I had one tool path cutting three, eight, three quarters of an inch instead of three eighths. So what I end up with here is uh, I've got my uh, lid and my base uh, of my little uh, gift box. Uh, this is the uh, kind of the insides. Now, once side one is carved, got my holes drilled and side one of the board is carved, I'm then gonna be unclamping, unclamping, uh, the uh, board from the table and I'm going to move the board out of the way and I'm going to be if you're working off the top of your material okay if you're working off the top of your material um, you want to uh, touch off on your waste board and then do your side two holes and everything you know when you're when you're uh, carving side two and um, but you want to, you want, you know, your waste board is zero. So you got to remember that uh, for me, my waste board is zero. So I'm going to be cutting into my waste board. And uh, the holes for me, and I don't want this to confuse you now. I, I don't want this to confuse you. I'm working off the bottom of my material. Okay. And my quarter inch holes, uh, if I... If I'm working off the bottom, my router is going to raise up and it's going to want to raise up three quarters and cut that quarter of an inch hole into, you know, the board. So I'll be carving in the air. The holes won't make it on my waste board. So for me, because I'm using in my setup here, I'm working off the <clears throat> machine bed as my Z0. I need to have a start depth on my, on my 
waste board alignment holes. I have to start at three quarters. That way it'll when I it'll raise up from zero up to three quarters, it'll come down that three quarters, and then it'll start carving in my waste board a quarter of an inch deep. For you, if you're working off the top of your material, then you just touch off on your waste board to make that zero um, when you're cutting through. Okay, so we're gonna calculate that toolpath again. Oops. Let's go to side two, select this vector here. All right, so if we look at our, uh, our design here for box one, a very simple and elegant uh, little uh, uh, gift box uh, for you know giving decorative pins, pencil sets and on. Of course, this would be wider, right? If it was a pen and pencil set. Uh, if it was, uh, you know, um, uh, a necklace, a bracelet, uh, you know, anything like that, you know, uh, you could, you know, the same principles and concepts would apply, you know, like a little jewelry gift box uh, and things. But uh, all in all, not bad for box number one. All right. Now, I'm going to take all of uh, these... Um, vectors on let's go to side one first I'm going to take all of these vectors and I'm going to move them to a new layer and call this my inbox side one turn that layer off Flip over to side two, select all of these. I'm gonna move them to a new layer. Call this pin box. Side two. Turn those off for a minute. All right, they're still here. You know, the layers are still here, but I'm turning them off because we're now going to make uh, box number two using the same board, same size board. All right. That's why the video is called out of one board, one type of board. Now, on this box here, uh, this is going to be a round box with a 3D model. Uh, the bottom is going to be cut out and the lid is going to be cut out. Now, I actually like these to be deeper. Uh, three quarters of an inch isn't quite going to be deep enough. Uh, for this box, uh, I so I usually go with an inch and a half thick. I either laminate two three quarter inch boards together, whatever the case may be, and uh, uh, you know, or use a thicker piece of milled wood that I might have um, milled wood that I might have uh, laying around. Okay. So let's see here. Um, you're gonna put the file in the digital wood carving group so we can. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, John. Yes, I will. Uh, but yeah, you would remove my name and put something else. <laughs> All right. So let's go back to side one here. And as a matter of fact, since I am going to, I tell you what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a whole new file. Let's save this, uh, save early, save often. Somebody reminded me that early as well. But since I am going to be using a little bit thicker piece of material, it could still be a same thin box like this. Uh, it'd be a nice little, uh, uh, oh, what the heck not, uh, am I trying to say? Nope, we're doing it out of one box, guys. Um, we're going to do it out of one box. Now, uh, we're going to do it out of one board, uh, out of here. And here's what we're going to do. Instead of gluing up the two boards before the carving, uh, I'm going to create the, uh, the base, a middle ring to give it some depth, uh, and then the lid, because I don't want the lid to be an inch and a half 
thick. Uh, I want the lid to be out of a three quarter inch board. So we're gonna use one board. We're going right here, here we go. All right, so for this one, we're gonna, it's gonna be a circle, uh, circular shape, or it could be a heart shape, whatever you know, shape that you want it to be. Uh, I'm going to go uh, with a, a three inch diameter. Um, and let's go ahead and control Use that alternate key there, buddy row, lock myself in. Two, three. All right. I'll get them, um, I'll get them spaced out accordingly as soon as I get all the vectors drawn. Now the three inch diameter is going to be our inner diameter. Okay. That's gonna be the inner diameter. Uh, our, our pocket for the inner of our board and all. Uh, and just like we did before, we're going to have a lip uh, and, and, and things like that and stuff just like we did with the boxes and everything on here. So um, I'm going to select these three guys here. I'll end up repositioning them in a minute. But, um, oh, geez, let's do it now because it'll drive me nuts. I'm selecting these three circles. Oops. I'm uh, selecting these three circles here. I just drew a rectangle here, and um, by the way, let me see if you're seeing that tool. You are seeing that tool. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm selecting that rectangle. I'm going to go into my alignment tool and align to the center. They're all stacked on top of each other right now. And then I'm going to space them inside that last vector, that rectangle that I selected last horizontally, and uh, space them out evenly. Now I can go ahead and delete that rectangle because I don't need it. All right, let me switch windows. Uh, that way, if I do open the tool database and everything, you guys and girls can see it um, and stuff. There we go. And let's go ahead and bear with me one second. Uh, let's grab a source here. Woo doggy. That way y'all can still see me. Okay. Um, Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm going to select all three of these circles. We're going to offset them outward. And remember on the lip, uh, this is our lip, our meat and everything that's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to take some abuse that lid going on, off, on, off, on, off and everything. Um, and like I said, minimum of a quarter of an inch, uh, uh, I highly recommend. So we're going to offset out for me, I'm going to go, uh, 0.3 and offset. Okay. Now that's going to be the lip. Now we have our you know, outer profile for our finished, you know, our box, our, you know, our final cutout here. Uh, and so right now these box uh, lids and everything, they're about 3.6 inches in diameter. And, um, you know, we need to, um, four, let's go with a four inch diameter box. Uh, so, I'm gonna take my circle here and I'm gonna type in the number four here and I'm gonna come over and find the center and click, center, click, center, click. Let me see here. I'm going to use my measurement tool. Let's 
bear with me, let me make these numbers a little bit more appropriate. Okay, so that's only giving me a 0.2 inch lip for the outside of this box, or uh, whatever it is. Um, let's go with um, four and four and an eighth. I want this one to have a little bit of meat. Four and an eighth. Find the center. Click. Center. Click. Center. Click. All right. Okay. Now. My middle ring here is going to be a ring. Um, and uh, basically, it's going to be the outside, the inside, and everything. And it's going to be the one that has the lip. Now, if I do this as a two-sided box, if I do this as a two-sided project, because I am going to be carving a model on, on the lid, we'll call this one the lid. All right, here, let's do this. Um, Tahoma font, quarter of an inch. All right, this will be the lid. This will be the center. Now, the center could actually be cut out of a contrasting piece of material to create a decorative band. Um, and the only reason I have a center ring here that's going to go here, that's going to be a center, glue it all together and everything, is to give my little box here, this little box, some depth. I want to put some stuff in there. If I'm going to put some Hershey's Kisses in there, I don't want it holding four or five Hershey Kisses. I want a good handful of Hershey Kisses. <laughs> um, but uh, so we're going to have a center ring. Now, we could be creative in this and not cut this center ring out of this piece of material we can actually cut the center out of another piece, a contrasting piece, and create a decorative band. Uh, we could have the bottom and the center carved out of one piece and the lid carved out of a contrasting piece of material to create a little bit of a contrast from the lid to the box. So, you know, this is where your imagination comes into play. You use your imagination on it. All right, let's, uh, so let's, um, bottom, center, lid. All right, so for the lid, for the lid, um, this inner pocket doesn't need to be there, just these two vectors. And um, we're going to copy, let's go ahead and copy this to the other side because I'm going to do a 3D model on it. So copy to the other side. All right, the center. The center has to have the opening going all the way through. So this is going to get pocketed out all the way through. Now, I'm not going to pocket it. That would be a waste of time on the toolpath. I'm going to do an inside profile cut all the way through on both sides. This piece is hollow all the way through. Uh, my bottom is the bottom, right? So uh, this one, I definitely need the inner uh, vector and the outer vector. Actually, all of them. Uh, in, no, inner and outer for side two, side two, side two. Uh, so copy to the other side. So just those two. This one's uh, for side one. I need that here. And then the bottom, same thing. I don't technically, for the bottom, I don't need the... Um, uh, I don't need the uh, center, just the final profile cut, cutting it out, because I'm not doing anything with that, you know, uh, anyway. So we'll copy that to the other side. Okay. All righty, let's, uh, let's go ahead and create some tool paths here. <clears throat> um, for this box here, I'm remember my lip, you know, that's getting cut 
uh, between these two areas. Well, I want to, I want my bit to go beyond the lip a little bit so it gets a nice clean cut. So I'm going to offset this one outward a sixteenth of an inch. Rinse and repeat, guys. If you remember what we just did 20 minutes ago, half an hour ago. All right, we're going to offset that outward. That's going to be the two vectors that I use for the pocket cut. So we're going to create a pocket cut. Um, this one is going to get cut to a quarter of an inch deep, just like before. And again, if that's not deep enough for you, if you want a little bit more of a bite, uh, you know, a little bit more of a, you know, bite, what have you, make it a little deeper. Go 0.3. You know, just remember, um, what you've done. Now, here's the trick. Here's the trick. Let me think about this for a minute. Bear with me a second. Because the middle has to fit on. And I'd like to create a little lip uh, for the middle to snap on to the bottom to when we glue it together. Um, so let me let me think about this for a second. That's my lip. So these, this is going to be my pocket cut here for the middle. All right, let's go ahead and let's get, let's get this created. Here we go. This and this, these two guys, it's not going to be the same tool bags. These are not three of identical items here. They're three separate items. So this is going to be my pocket tool bath cutting a quarter of an inch deep, quarter inch end mill. I'm going to use my ramps and this is going to be side one bottom. Oops. Got my cap box on. Side one, bottom, 0.25 in mill. This will make sense in just a minute when we actually can preview the tool pass and see them and everything. Okay. All right. Side one, bottom. Um, I may, here, let's do this. Rename this. Uh, I'm going to go round box. We'll call it round box bottom. That way we can keep it separate from the other tool pass. All right. So that's going to be that guy. That's going to be my uh, pocket cut. Um, there we go. It's going to be the pocket cut. The inside pocket cut uh, is going to be... Uh, remember, we've got we're going to be adding this three quarter of an inch depth here to this pocket. So three quarters of an inch, this ring right here, is getting added to this. Now you don't have to do the ring if you just want a shallow box. You'll see what it all looks like here when it gets done. But um, so three quarters plus three eighths, um, you know, an inch and an eighth deep. If I go a half inch, uh, that's an inch and a quarter deep. Yeah, let's go half inch deep. All right. So a pocket cut, 0.5 inches deep. And this is going to be my side one. Round box bottom. I'm just going to put BTM. Pocket, 0.25 in mil. All right, we're gonna calculate uh, the ramp. Everything's the same, rinse and repeat. Okay, let's preview that cut. Okay. All right, and then the uh, profile cut is gonna end up being all three of these, but let's just create one uh, for preview purposes only. And then we'll come back and clean it up. Profile toolpath, uh, three-eighths of an inch deep, quarter-inch end mill, outside of the cut. 
Uh, I want to add tabs. And I'm going to do a tab. Let's edit the tabs and let's go. This is round, so I don't want to do a whole lot of sanding, so I'm only going to put two tabs. Two tabs. Okay. All right. Okay, now the center is going to be hollow in the middle, but it's going to have this outside edge here. Uh, that it's going to literally, we're going to add some glue, nice little glue ring, and we're going to glue that ring on. And again, the center, the middle, the center, uh, can be whatever, um, uh, it could be out of this wood, it could be out of a contrasting piece of wood, it could be out of anything, you know, mix and match and mix and match uh, and stuff um, and everything. All right, so for the center, because on this, um, you know, lip here, think of the white. Let's fill in both of these. Okay, so the white area is the lip. And so on these vectors here, this is what's going around that lip. Okay, so this is going to be the cut. And... <clears throat> It needs to slide over and all. So that's going to be solid wood there. And then this area here is going to be, you know, pocketed out. And it's only going to be pocketed out to a, a certain depth because, um, uh, and I want my bit. Let's offset this one inward, the center line. We got to offset inward because I want my bit to go. I want my bit to clear this uh, to give me a nice clean edge. So we're gonna go inward a sixteenth of an inch. Let's try inward, Laney, a sixteenth of an inch. There we go. And this guy right here is gonna be the pocket cut. And uh, on this one, we really definitely do not want to bottom out because this is going to be our glue. This is our middle ring. So quarter of an inch was the depth here. So let's go with, uh, you know, uh, we got to give room for glue and things like that. But we don't want a big old air gap either, uh, you know. So I'm going to go 0.3. Um, No, go 0.27. I don't need that big of a cap. I don't need 0 0.3. 0 0.27 inches and um, quarter of an inch end mill. Use my ramp. Calculate that tool path. Okay. And then we've got to um, hollow out our uh, center hole and so this is cutting all the way through now on this one there's really no uh, I don't necessarily need to do 3 8 and 3 8 but might as well right well one side 3 8 the other side 3 8 get a nice clean cut and things and my tabs can be in the middle so this cut here is going to be 3 8 of an inch and also, it doesn't need to be a pocket cut, a uh, profile cut, profile cut. We ain't, don't need to waste all that time milling all this stuff away in the middle here. Uh, so, three-eighths of an inch profile. Um, there's going to be a center chunk that's going to get discarded. So, uh, we'll add a couple of tabs. Just two. All right, three eighths of an inch deep, cutting through this side on the outside with the tabs. Um, spiral ramp. Make sure everything matches. All right, this is my center. Uh, here, side one, center ring. 
Uh, center ring, center cut. That's what it is, really. Center cut. Okay, 0.25 end mill. No. No. We want to be on the inside of the line, Junior. Inside of the line. I was like, wait a minute there, Mr. Doubtfire. Uh, let's reset that preview because I screwed up. Uh, and I got to be sure uh, be sure to remind me um, to rename these two. Side one outer profile. Try to be consistent in the way things are written. Um, round box outer profile 0.25 in mil. I'm just cleaning up the mess here. Uh, rename side one. Box. I don't know what to name that one. Center pocket, center outer pocket, center pocket. That's all right. We'll get it. We know what it is. Okay, let's look at this uh, again here. Uh, we've got the uh, round box uh, side one outer cut, our inner cut. So those two are done. Uh, we've got the let's preview those guys. Okay, perfect. All right, so. So you're not confused uh, in everything. It'll make sense when this part is cut out. But this center ring right here is trash. That's waste. It's going to be gone. Okay? It's going to be gone. This lip, this shallow lip right here, is what's going to fit over this ring. Okay? Um, and then, of course, we got we still got to do the profile cut out of this. Um, but that's what fits over there, and it's cut just a few thousandths of an inch deeper than this uh, this ring lip here, uh, so that uh, it doesn't bottom out. You got room for glue and all to glue that middle ring on. So the last piece of the puzzle for this one is the center ring profile cut. Okay, so that's this guy right here. And he's going to go in with the profile cut of the other one, side one, outer profile, which should be that. So we're going to add him into the mix, it into the mix. We're going to add, we're going to edit the tabs and we're going to add a tab here. And everything is the same for that. Okay, my center ring will be fitting over this. Let's see if we can turn this sideways. You might be able to see it better. This is the inner part that sits over this here and sits flush and it should, uh, with that room and everything, if you get a nice cut and all, seam line should pretty much disappear. You might still see it, but you know, it should pretty much disappear. All right, that leaves the lid. The lid has a pocket cut, not all the way through, just a pocket cut, and it needs to be, um, you know, deep enough to fit on the center ring. 
the center ring has to have you know the uh, same you know lip as that so when this gets flipped over bam and fits onto this on side two which we haven't done yet we're gonna have the same lip is the bottom here that the, the, the lid cuts on. Now, if you don't want to be flipping this over, if you want the grain to kind of stay somewhat the you know same direction, whatever the case may be, then um, these cuts here, these cuts here would be on the bottom side. These tool paths that we just created here would be on the bottom side. All right, I don't want to confuse you, so I might end up cleaning that up. Give me a second, let's do this one first. Pocket cut. This is gonna be a pocket cut, and it's gonna to be to a, a depth of 0.3 inches deep, 3125 actually, 0.3125, give myself some room so I'm not bottoming it out uh, on that quarter of an inch. We're going to go with a quarter inch end mill, raster cut, ramp. This is gonna be my lid pocket. Um, side one lid pocket uh, side one lid pocket uh, 0.25 in them Yeah, I'm going to have to clean the middle one up for you guys because right now, if you were looking at that board, it would be a little bit confusing how that goes. Um, if you can see my camera, basically I had the board where the middle ring, center ring, would get cut out and go right on to the bottom. And so on the bottom side, we haven't created that toolpath yet, which would have the same lip that the lid fits on. So you, you would flip it over like a sandwich fit together there. And then, of course, the lid goes on that. If you don't want to have to flip this, you want to be able to take that piece out of the board and bring it over and drop it down on the bottom, you know, and it glue in. Then we got to put these tool paths for that center on the bottom side and then change the way we create the top tool pass. You understand what I mean? Hopefully you do by that. Hopefully you were able to see my camera. Um, and I think I'm going to do that to clean that up for you. All right, so we got to go to the outer profile we got to add this one in, edit the tabs, and calculate. The center, uh, Wayne, um, the, the center is going to be three quarters of an inch. That's how deep, the center's cutting all the way through. It's cutting all the way out. That That's waste material. This is gonna be hollow. It's just a ring. It's an outer ring that's gonna go, that's gonna fit over there to extend the depth of this, uh, this pocket, you know, in the center of this box. That waste that you see there is gone. The only reason it's not cut out yet is because it's got, I got tabs there holding it in, you know, um, but, Let's clean up this middle. I'm going to I'm going to end up uh, changing up the the center here. So we're just taking the board when we cut those two pieces out where we just take it off. It comes and it glues on to the bottom like that where you're not flipping it and everything. So we're just and everything. So let's let's clean that up. So um, <clears throat> this is going to all of these vectors here are going to get uh, copied to the other side. Okay. All of those vectors are going to get copied to the other side. And um, on this one for this top side, we won't need this. And This ring gets offset outward a sixteenth of an inch. 
All right, so we're going to clean this up. Um, the side one, our profile. This is, I'm trying to figure out which ones I need to delete. Center pocket. Um, that stays. Center pocket. Uh, it's going to get deleted. All right. Okay. This and this can be cut together because they're pretty much almost identical looking. Um, reset that back all right so let's go we should have now that center pocket let's preview those two tool paths these two should almost be almost a mirror or just they look just like each other uh, these cutouts should look just like each other um, Outer profile that goes down to the bottom of the list. Center ring cut out that should be cutting all the way through. Preview the selected toolpath. There we go. This is going to get removed. I'm not doing a pocket. There's no sense in pocketing. It's just a waste of time because it's getting cut all the way through. So a profile cut's going to be better. Uh, and then we should have our lid pocket and then our outer profiles on all these. So preview the visible tool pass. Okay. All right. So now, now the lid is gonna fit onto the center here. And this center on the bottom side, when we create those other tool paths, it's gonna raise up and sit and fit on this. It's almost like a lid basically, but uh, you know, it's hollow all the way through. So let's flip over to the other side. Okay. And uh, we've got our lid Bottom, I don't need these guys here. Bottom center lid. All right, for the lid, this is where my 3D model's gonna go. So let's go ahead and let's find a 3D model. Um, and uh, I'm gonna use a decorative model instead of a uh, animal or something like that. I want a nice decorative model. Let's see what we've got here. Let's size it down. And let's get it centered. So hold down the shift key, select this ring here, open up the alignment tool and center. I like it. Oops. Don't do that. Make sure you don't move your, hold on, make sure you don't move your uh, vectors. I like it a little off center. Kind of like that. That looks a little bit more appealing to my eye. All right. So we got the model. We'll create that toolpath in just a second, but let's come over here on the bottom. 
The bottom's the easiest one. There's nothing to do but a profile cut. Okay, it gets cut out. Bam, done. Okay, uh, the here is the the center. This is the one where we got to create that lip on that side. So let's go ahead and uh, let's create uh, that the, that toolpath. So we've got our pocket cut going between here. It's actually going to be between these lines, but I'm letting my bit go over this line to create a nice clean lip here. So that's going to be the pocket cut. And that pocket cut is, oh, I brought a model in, so it wants me to, uh, you know, it wants to, uh, you know, um, make sure I position the model in the material. Now, that model is, in fact, at the bottom of my material, because that's the bottom of the board, guys. The model is, in fact, at the bottom. Now, I don't want it all the way at the bottom. I want to add a little bit of um, meat above uh, the model just a little bit because the hearts are round and my the top of my board is is flat so what i want to do is i'm just going to add about ten thousandths of an inch so i'm going to make this four three nine three and just move that up put a little skin of meat down there okay so the model is at the bottom of the material because we are on the bottom of the board so be, be mindful of that all right so let's click okay let's get back to what we were doing yeah, I, because you brought the model in, it wanted you to verify the material setup. So, I had to do that. Okay. So, on my pocket cut, this is going to be cut to um, uh, a, a 0 0.27. Uh, just a little bit. I want a little bit of room for glue, but I don't want a big old air gap. So, 0 0.27. Um eighth inch offset ramp this is going to be my center side to center pocket 0.25 in mil and round box okay side to round box center pocket okay and now that that pocket's getting cut out, now the center, uh, the center can get hollowed out all the way through. So just this vector here, um, and uh, this vector uh, is a duplicate, so we can actually delete it. There we go. Um, duplicate. You can tell a duplicate by if I undo that. You can tell a duplicate by the pink line with the black behind it. That means that there's another vector right on top of it. You know, so just, you know, select one of them, hit delete and get rid of it. You should see a nice white kind of dotted line behind there. All right, so this is going to be a profile cut, cutting three-eighths of an inch deep, quarter inch in mill on the inside of the cut. On the inside here, we're removing that material. Uh, we're going to add two tabs. Okay. And of course, I bet you I deleted the one vector that had the tabs. So let's do this. Uh, let's control Z. Let's close this. There's the two tabs. So that's the vector that I want. The other one, I'll just leave it there for right now. It'll ignore it. The software will ignore it if, it, if it's selected. Okay, so three eighths of an inch deep on the inside of the cut. Edit the tabs, uh, they're already there. So we're adding the tabs, so we can calculate that out. All right, so uh, it. let's rename this side to center round box, center cut 0.25 in all right let's see what we've got so far so let's preview the uh, visible tool pass okay so this area is waste right that's waste you're gonna throw that away or use it for something else down the road who knows uh, but that's waste uh, I've got this lip here uh, that will fit on the uh, you know side one um, over this lip here and this lip is 0.25 inches deep. 
my pocket there is 0.27, giving me a little bit of room for uh, glue and stuff like that. So I have a nice fit and I'm not bottoming it out, bottoming it out. So it'll fit right on there. And so when that centers on there, then now my lid will fit on here. Okay. So that's kind of where we're at right now. All right. So that's done. Okay. So let's go back to our 2D view. Uh, our model cut. Let's go ahead and get our model cut done. Now on the model cut, uh, I'm actually going to use this vector here. Uh, and I'm going to use this vector as the boundary to, uh, to carve the model. Uh, the boundary to carve the model. And everything um, so uh, first things first is uh, let's go ahead and um, I think this model is kind of shallow yeah so I really don't need a rough cut there's not enough material there to really warrant a rough cut so I'm just gonna do a finish cut and I'm gonna use the selected vector as the boundary I'm not gonna let it offset the boundary at all so zero and for this, uh, it's uh, a small area. Uh, it's a small area. And uh, the heart, I'm going to use a 16th inch end mill or ball nose uh, to do this and everything because I want to try to get the best detail I can out of my heart. So I could give them a little bit more shape and stuff, but I want them to be low profile like they are. So I'm using a 16th inch uh, ball nose end mill. And um, this is going to be side two, uh, round box, lid, model, 0 0.0625, tapered ball nose, TBN. All right, let's calculate that. We preview that toolpath, and this actually, uh, I'm, eh, it's not too deep, so uh, not necessarily doesn't necessarily need a, uh, um, doesn't necessarily need a rough cut and everything. All right, on the lid. Now we got to do the profile cutout, uh, and so on the profile cutout, one, two, three. And if I did this right, when we do the final profile cut, uh, with all these vectors being copied over, the tabs should be there. If not, then I'm bringing them back over from the other side. So let's go click on Add Tabs. And I only got one tab up here. No other tabs. Let's click on Edit Tabs. No other tabs. So I don't want to reinvent the wheel and try to find you know where my tabs exactly are and stuff. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my three profiles here, delete them, and I'm going to go back to side one for a moment. I'm going to grab one, two, oops, not that one, three. And they've already got their tabs. I'm missing a tab right here. I'm missing a tab there too. All right, let's let's uh, let's copy these over to the other side. Nope, let's stop for a minute. Uh, let's create, let's go to this profile cut, find out where my tabs are. Edit tabs, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, okay, they're there. They were hidden by the green start button uh, start thing. Okay. They're there. They're hidden by the, the, the start of the line. All right. Just making sure. All right. We're going to copy these to the other side. And then we're going to go one, two, three profile cut. Uh, cutting all the way through the material on the outside of the line with our quarter inch end mill. We're going to add tabs. All the tabs are there. They are there. They're just these two are hidden behind uh, these uh, start points. Um, we're going to uh, add a ramp, spiral ramp. Make sure that my tool pass match. 
and this is our final toolpath for this box. So it's going to be uh, side two. I still got to do my alignment pin holes, right? Side two, round box, final profile, 0.25 in mil. All right, let's calculate that out. Okay, let's preview um, that toolpath. Remember, the, the bottom doesn't have anything unless you're going to put an inscription. <laughs> unless you're going to put some kind of inscription, that would be the place to put it, you know, down in there uh, and everything. Uh, that would be the place to put it, uh, would be down here and uh, in all. Uh, so if we preview all the, let's see here, uh, both sides here. So we've got our lid, our lid that fits over um, this ring here. And then this ring on the bottom side, you know, fits um, over here. And that gives us a, you know, pretty deep uh, thing and made it out of all out of one board. The only thing that we're missing are our alignment pin holes and everything. So what I'm gonna do with this is, cause it's a whole separate board, right? Uh, let's go ahead and uh, just still I'm going to steal these. Do I turned on those other two layers for a minute? Uh, I'm going to copy those to a new layer. There we go. And then that way I can turn that layer off. Flip to the other side. Take these two here. Copy those because they're the same and turn that layer back off okay so my alignment holes um, they're good there actually with this lid this box here I'd probably bring them in a little bit more uh, yeah let's do that bring that one in there that one in there flip to the other side uh, delete delete All right, copy these back over to the other side. Um, so they match and on. This is side one, so let's go ahead and create this uh, toolpath. And what I'm gonna do is uh, my side one alignment holes, I'm just going to duplicate that toolpath. And I'm gonna drag that bad boy right down here. And Calculate that. That'll be my alignment holes, you know, in the board, three eighths of an inch deep. And then on the other side, same thing. Uh, the on uh, side two, my wasteboard alignment hole toolpath that I've already got created. I'm going to uh, duplicate it, move it down, and select this. Choose my uh, quarter inch end mill, calculate. And since I had to choose my end mill on this, that almost tells me that this one is incorrect. So, yep, my tool is incorrect. Let's go back to that wasteboard lime hole. That should be my quarter inch end mill. All right, so here's what we've got. Don't want this to be too confusing with all these tool paths and things. Let's take a look at what we've got here. Let's reset our board back to a blank. And um, let's look at this in our 3D view here. Let's go straight on here. Let's go to side one. All right, so on side one, uh, we have our alignment holes that are gonna get milled first. Uh, or not first, but you know, they're gonna get milled. Then our uh, bottom uh, cut, bottom pocket, our center ring 
uh, the lid pocket and then the outer profile of all these are going to get cut. So this is going to be our box. So we've got our uh, bottom little pocket, the bottom ring, you know, that gets cut out right there. There we go. Uh, this is going to be the center piece and then the lid pocket and then the profile cuts, cutting halfway through the material. Okay. All right. So that'll be, that'll be side one. We're going to move the board out of the way, touch off on your waste board. You're going to then, uh, you know, run the waste board alignment holes in uh, side two. And um, you're going to run uh, the waste board alignment holes in the waste board, not in your project board. When they get milled, uh, you're going to then um, take your alignment pins, stick them in your uh, holes, flip your board over, uh, slide it down on there, and then you're going to be running... Uh, the side to uh, pocket, the center cutout, the uh, lid 3D model, and then the final profile cut. Preview those tool paths. And that will give you your uh, lid and everything and then your box and stuff. And again, that center ring could be a contrasting piece of material uh, to give you a nice little contrasting band. Or the lid could be a contrasting piece of material from the top and or the middle and the bottom. Uh, 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 you know, the bottom could be a contrast. I mean, you could just kind of mix and match it up. Now, someone just asked for uh, runtime. Let's take a look at our uh, total runtime for this particular, uh, these particular boxes. So let's look at our first box, um, our outer profile. Uh, our first box, uh, the runtime for the two boxes on the uh, bottom side is going to be 29 minutes, 29 minutes, and uh, side one. Uh, our alignment holes, our pin box lid, uh, outer profile. So total of a um, hundred minutes, one hour, one hour, not a hundred minutes, one hour, one hour, 32 seconds uh, to make those four boxes, uh, both sides. You know, that's for the, the pin box. All right, let's uh, turn those off. And bear with me a second. My names are a little long, so. Uh, Keeps jumping on me. All right, waste board alignment hole, side two. Come on now. Hour and 23 minutes for the round box. Okay. So about an hour for the um, pin box, two, ten, two pin boxes, top and bottom. And for the one um, decorative box, um, about an hour and 23 minutes. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right. So um, you know. Uh, any, let's see, let's see what we got for questions and I'll, um, uh, I think the piece in the center, Todd, the piece in the center won't be a problem, uh, cause of the tabs and everything. Let me know what you think, why it might be a problem. Um, 
with the dabs. Let me know on that one. Todd, uh, H, C, and C. Uh, let's see here. Home Depot stair treads are one inch thick and only 12 bucks. Yeah, you know, I actually use those stair treads for a lot of different projects. They're nice. Uh, actually, not bad either. They're oak. Um, and all. I'm just not a big fan of carving oak a lot. You know, uh, it's for, for specific things, but I don't, I'm, I'm really not a big fan of carving oak. It's too open, poor grain, and if I have any detail and all, it really kind of gets lost in everything. But you're absolutely right. Those stair treads are nice. You know, even the round uh, stool lids, uh, they're like 15-inch diameter, you know, uh, rings and stuff. Those are nice, too, because they're, they're, they've got they've got about one-inch thickness to them, too. Um, let's see here. Ronnie, uh, as far as charge, Ronnie Probert asked, you know, what, what, would, what would you charge for these boxes? Well, I mean, these are small gift boxes and stuff. Uh, and if I were selling, like, my pen boxes and stuff... Usually the value is in my pen, uh, you know, that I've turned and stuff. And, uh, you know, my pens sell for around $125 uh, and up um, and everything. So the box is kind of a give me, you know, because um, that's what's holding that $125 pen type of deal. Uh, so I really don't, you know, I really haven't put a price on it. Now, as far as just selling the boxes themselves, for people that want, you know, that want to, that make, maybe you might be selling these boxes to pen turners or you might be uh, selling these little gift boxes to, uh, like I have a store across the street from my house called Your Heart's Desire. Any kind of little knick-knack thing that you could possibly think of is in there and, uh, you know, it's a nice place to do consignment and stuff with and all uh, and everything. Um, but uh, those would be more of these type round gift boxes or heart shaped gift boxes or, you know, little square gift boxes and things like that. The pin boxes are, you know, usually make for my pins. But if it was going to be a jewelry box, you know, holding some jewelry, you know, like a, like a bracelet and all. And somebody wanted to, you know, surprise their special someone with a, you know, a bracelet and they were looking for the perfect box to put it in type of deal uh, and everything. I don't know. Uh, 25, 30 bucks. You know, there's not a whole lot to it and everything um, and everything um, for the pin boxes. Uh, these boxes here, you know, I'd probably go up. I'd probably be about 40, 45 dollars. Not much. Again, they're, they're, you know, 15 inch by uh, five and a half inch piece of material. Uh, there's no cost in it. Hardly for me. Okay, let's see here. Um, you may want. William says you may want the box uh, deeper by carving uh, out some depth in the bottom. Well, that's well, that's what we and that's what we we've done is we've given it depth by carving out. This is a half inch deep right here on my three quarter inch board. This center pocket is a half inch deep, uh, and then I'm adding another three quarters of an inch of depth to that by adding including this middle ring uh, here, uh, which uh, will give me a total of an inch and a quarter of depth and everything. And imagine if I made more of these rings, I could make a long tube, you know, uh, type of, uh, you know, deal and stuff. Um, if I kept going with these rings and every type of thing and I had a nice uh, little stainless steel uh, decanter to fit in the middle, I could make a little, uh, a little mug with a lid, you know, like a little coffee mug with a lid, you know. I mean, all kinds of neat things you can do with that. But, um, uh, but no, I've got a half inch deep pocket with a three quarter inch depth here of this ring. Because that centerpiece is trash. It gets thrown away. Or it goes in the scrap bin, one of the two. But that, that's more depth for this uh, and, and everything. So we got an inch and a quarter of depth overall. Um, but, uh, you know. Now, uh, Kevin, you're saying no tabs on the center. Um, you mean for preview purposes? Because I, 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 I would put tabs on the center so that part doesn't move around while it's getting cut um, and everything. But uh, uh, for preview purposes, if I come into... Um, let 
this toolpath here and turn that off. And I go over to side one here and I go into this toolpath here and turn the tab off. And I preview the selected toolpath on this side. Flip it over. Preview the selected toolpath on this side. And I double click on this and delete that. For visual purposes, does that help y'all out better without that piece being in there? Uh, for the ring. Is that better for you? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, yeah, I, I charge, uh, my, my machining hours, uh, 30, $35 an hour. So $40 is good. Uh, Todd, uh, let's see here. Um, you're welcome, John. Thank you. Yeah. A lot of thought does go into them. I mean, and it's, it's uh, it's 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 man, they're really neat little boxes, neat little lids. Oh, speaking of the lid, hold on, I forgot to put my allowance in. I forgot to put my allowance in. Let's go back to uh, side one here. My lid pocket. I forgot to put my allowance in. I'm glad somebody reminded me of that. Let's calculate that. It'd have been a tight fit. Okay. All right. So that takes care of that. Um, let's see here. Um, if the grain is an issue, uh, lid pocket should be done uh, on the side two uh, carving side on side one. If grain is an issue, the lid pocket should be done on side two. 3D model carving on side one. Oh, uh, the grain pattern. Yes. Yeah, what, uh, what uh, Kevin is saying is uh, this is the bottom, right? So this is the side and everything. We have kind of the grain uh, and everything. So if the middle ring went on here, then the lid would go on top of that. And so the model would be up here. And that's easy enough to do. Let's take a moment and let's do that because that is a big consideration. So let's take a second and let's do that. Uh, let's go over to side two. Uh, let's take this and move this over to the other side. And um, let's get rid of let's get rid of the 3D finish cut lid model cut. We'll get rid of that over here. Delete this. Um, we're gonna create a pocket cut. 0.3125 inches deep, uh, quarter inch end mill pocket ramp. Uh, this will be side two lid round box lid pocket 0.25 in mil. Calculate that. Let's flip over to the other side. Uh, let's take our heart and let's mirror that. And I like that to be down just a little bit. Okay, let's go into it. We got to go into our material setup because that's completely changed now. Uh, the model should be at the top of the material. So we got to move it up. Move it on up. Okay. 
and I want to put about 10 thousandths of an inch of skin over it. Uh, um, let's calculate, let's click OK there. And let's go in to create a 3D finish cut using the selected vector as the boundary. Uh, say everything else is the same. Uh, and this is going to be side one, uh, round box, uh, lid model, point zero six two five TVM, tapered ball nose. Calculate. Okay, let's reset the preview. Uh, let's come back over here and um, all right, preview the visible tool pass on this side. Oh, okay, Kevin, I'll look at that uh, on the pin box when I preview the cut. All right, so let's flip over to um, side two. Oh, I should have shortened these names up. So... <clears throat> What Kevin was saying, what his point was, was if grain is, you know, if there's a, if there's an order to the grain, especially the side grain and everything, and the way this box is going to be fitting on and all, uh, we want to keep that grain, that grain pattern consistent. And uh, by putting the um, the model on the top, that's that would be uh, consistent. But uh, first of all, where's my model at? Hold on a second, there, I'm missing a model. I'm missing a model. Um, I bet you I uh, carved it right away. Let's see here. Side to center round final pocket. Let's go to side one. I bet you I milled that sucker right out of there. I sure did. Uh, where's my lid? Lid model. That goes before the outer profile. Lid pocket. I should have deleted that one. Delete this. Oh, I have to do that all over again. Okay. All right. So, um, Let's see here. Yep. 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 I agree, Kevin. Um, so this would be, you know, that way all the grain lines up because the middle piece, uh, let's cut out side two. Let's cut this stuff all the way out. Bear with me a second. Uh, let's go in here and uh, one, and preview the visible tool pass. But um, let's get rid of that.
Okay, so uh, basically, uh, middle ring glues on top of this ring, lid press fits on top of this ring, and all the grain is in the same direction and everything. Now, all right, so that's box number two. All right, let's reset this preview one last time. I want to go back to the pin box for a minute. Uh, I want to take a look at the pin box for a second. Uh, somebody was pointing something out about the pin box. All right. Now, take your shapes. Now, take your shapes of uh, these boxes, um, and you know they can they can be all different types of things. But you just you they're they're pressure fit uh, lids and all, and you can just you know you can just take this simple concept and create all kinds of neat little shaped boxes. You know, Valentine's boxes, gift boxes, jewelry boxes, uh, pin boxes, um, anything. Like I said, if I keep stacking those rings, uh, you know, I could make a thermos. Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, one. Did I already carve that side? Yeah, I did. Flip over to the other side. Uh, let's see here. That, 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 and that. Preview visible tool pass. Yeah, there's not a whole lot uh, to that center. Um, uh, Kevin, there's not a whole lot to that center. Uh, I'm not I'm not going to tab it. Uh, there's no, uh, it's scrap wood. Uh, even if this gets milled away, that little piece isn't going to bother me at all uh, and everything. Um, you know, there's only a very small skin of uh, uh, material holding that center piece in. Um but I'm not going to throw tabs on my corners of my boxes just for that centerpiece and everything. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. All right. So uh, good looking out. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it's 1030. I want to thank you uh, for sticking with me. Now, these are just two shapes of many shapes that we could do. Imagine if this box had a heart shape. It's the same concept. The only difference with a heart shape on your offsets and things, you got to use radiuses at the bottom of the heart. That sharp point's not going to cut it. You know, make the bottom of the heart box a little bit wider, you know, a little bit wider and rounder and everything. Uh, that type of deal. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a heart box, but I'm just giving you, you know, an example. Uh, the boxes could be any shape. It could be an oval box. It could be a figure eight box. It could be square box it could be you know whatever the case may be um you can do all kinds of neat things it could be a dual box with uh two lids right a square box with two openings in it uh and uh two lids that fit on it uh, it could be square or round however you you know want it to be uh it could be multi-compartment you know type of box so think about that and uh yep yeah that's 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 Best way to make my board a little bit longer, Todd, to give me a little bit more meat in that middle area and stuff. But, um, you know, hopefully this will just give you, you know, something to uh, consider or think about. And, um, you know, just a nice little way to make a couple of decorative little, uh, little boxes out of a simple scrap piece of wood. Uh, you know, uh, scrap pieces of wood, woods that, uh, you know, you're like, you know, I want to make something other than a sign, you know, what could I do? Well, there you go, you know, and uh, there you go, soapbox, absolutely. Uh, uh, eyeglass, you know, for a uh, box for, uh, you know, a nice little eyeglass case, uh, you know, a nice little wooden eyeglass, custom wooden eyeglass case and everything. 
Uh, maybe if you uh, you have the market and all and you're selling sunglasses and you need a nice little box for your sunglass cases and all that stuff, you know, things like that, uh, things to think about. <clears throat> but um, uh, hopefully that you were able to pick up maybe a couple of little things from there and you weren't too confused with the two projects uh, as far as, uh, you know, we've got multiple toolpaths here, but w the upper set of toolpaths is for the pin box. The lower set is for the, you know, the round box and stuff. And I'll clean this up. And all and uh, um, I'm actually on this one guys I'm gonna make the files available um, not only to the digital wood carver owners group but I will put a download link in the description of this video it's the only video I've done this on uh, I will put a download link description uh, in this video um, that you can download uh, this this, uh, this project and everything and just you have to make sure that don't take don't ever take a project for granted or a toolpath for granted things like that you've got to go in and recalculate the toolpaths and things for your machine your tools make sure you're using the tools that you have and it's you know you're it's not calculated for a tool that you don't own and things like that you've got to do that and all um and everything for there but i will make this uh, available to everyone because it's fun little projects to make and uh, you can be creative uh, now before I make the them available. I will go in and clean the vectors up on the uh, triangular pattern there uh, and stuff uh, so they're a little bit cleaner and stuff on those corners on a couple of them and everything so uh, we'll go from there all right Hopefully this was able to help uh, answer some questions and until next time I Don't see any other questions yeah. See you soon, guys. See you next week. Bye now. I want to thank you for joining us tonight on Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. If you're watching Spindle TV on YouTube, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. You can find out more information about our training and products by visiting us at www.digital.com. Dot com.